Good evening, one and all. Welcome from Nanaimo Spring Crane Arena and BCHL Hockey Live on Shaw TV. Tonight, it's the Powell River Kings visiting the Nanaimo Clippers. Hello, I'm Chad Brennan. Great to have you with us tonight in our January matchup between two of the top teams in the Island Division. With six weeks left in the season, there's a lot happening in the standings. Let's have a look. It's an absolute log jam atop the standings with Victoria, Nanaimo, Powell River, all within two points of one another. 51 with Victoria, 49 and 48 with Powell River. It's those two games in hand with Powell River that's very important. But let's have a look at Alberni and Cowichan. Both there, very close, eight points separating. Cowichan starting to creep up on Alberni. Possibly could take over that fourth spot. You never know, lots happening here. Before we get to game time though, it is with heavy hearts that the British Columbia Hockey League sends news of the passing of longtime Vernon Vipers owner and governor Duncan Ray. Uh, passed away at the age of 69 or 68. So each BCHL team will hold a moment of silence here prior uh, to the game in his honor. We were shocked and sad. Uh, Commissioner uh, John Grisdale had the following statement. We were shocked and saddened to receive word today about Duncan. He was the lifeblood of the Vipers franchise for a very long time, and he leaves a huge void in our league and in our hearts. Professionally, Ray was an accomplished and uh, well-respected oral surgeon, and on more than one occasion, he was pressed into service to be able to do some quick repairs at the bench to be able to help out the players and get them back into the game. Ray's service to the BCHL was unmatched and he was the league's chairman, board of directors, right up to his time of passing. Uh, he also served as chairman from 1999 to 2006 before resuming the role in 2011. Players that we're going to look at here today, Powell Rivers' Hunter uh, Finlater, number 20, is scheduled to play in his 200th career game here today. He is a hometown boy, so of course they'll be looking to the KG veteran for some leadership today. And for the Nanaimo Clippers, we're going to look at number 10, Parker Colley. He Parker's on a bit of a tear as of late, uh, six points in his last four games. Boy. And with that, it's time to get underway. Starting goalies for tonight, number 35, Mitch Adamic. 12-8-1 record so far in the season, 918 save percentage, 2.53 goals against. As Chad said, big double overtime match for him in his last game. See how he holds up tonight against the Clippers. And for those Clippers, number 30, Taz Berman is opposite number 13, 10 and 1, 919 save percentage, 2.5 goals against. Give it about even to both teams there on the goaltending line there, Kyle. Yeah, and I think uh, Taz Berman, he came in midway through the year. They they needed a starting goaltender. Noah featherston Hago has been very good when called upon this year. But Taz Berman, is just he's got major junior experience, and it's just a settling factor he has with this team. He came in, and he slowed things down and really helped them, especially on their streak where they got points in, I think, 12 straight games. And with that, opening puck drop, one by the Kings. Back to defensive zone. Where they will break out nearly picked off there by Babich. So it will go out wide and to break in. There is a super quick. Babich recovers. Broken up at the blue line, but still with it is Crozier. Babich now straight through center. Puts it out wide. Shot on net. Easily gloved down by Adamic. And that's your first save of the evening. Routine there, though, attempted breakouts on both sides. A little bit sloppy from the Clippers to open things up there, Kyle. Well, that shot on was actually a really good idea because if Babich can get to it and maybe redirect it, they'll have a shot. But Adamic's too good a goaltender to throw a floater in on him like that and expect it to go by him. But they were looking for the tip on that one. And good job by Adamic to get a whistle. Clippers leave the same line out on the ice. Crozier losing that drop, but it will be kept in at the line. Just in front of the faceoff circle, make that. Still in the Powell River zone now that they will finally break it down, and it will be intercepted there by Kimball. 
He will corral it, watched closely by Crozier. And two Crozier brothers for the Clippers. Tristan and Maxwell, and it's blocked there and back the other way, trying to break out. Was Brodziak. Second back now. On defense is Bono. Both on the other side, and they will shovel it forward over the blue line. Back it goes. Pouliot forced to retreat. Just out wide it goes. To an empty wing. Quick dump there by Kawamura, and he will change. On the net now. This is Gerard trying to find a way out. He does take the shot off the side of the net. Him to stuff it in down low, not having that was Berman. That goes back to the point. Shot through traffic, deflected, and that will go up and out for a whistle into the netting. We were talking off the top about how well, the keys to this game, Powell River, when they get a lead, they're very tough. And they, they got a lead against the Nymo here in a 4-1 victory earlier in the year. They pretty much just shut things down when it got to 2-3-0. And for Nanaimo, their power play, especially at home, is very good. So Powell River, key for them is to stay out of the penalty box. This is Powell River now off the draw. Good shot low there. Locked. And back the other way come the Clippers. Shot on target there by Colley, just dumping it in across the blue line. No rebound whatsoever. Adamic easily swallowing that up. The face off in the Powell River end. So far, Clippers having a little bit of trouble in the face-off circle. Power River having their numbers so far, I believe. So far, perfect through three draws. Let's see if they keep this going. They will. That might be a good story to watch as we go around here, Kyle. If it's if it's going to be all Power River on the face-offs, that's going to be a massive point in their favor. And breaking in over the blue line now is Koblenz. Can't get that one on target. And it'll be Clippers coming the other way. Pass out to the wing for Lynn. Dumps it in, flipped in, chasing after this will be Celia. Can't quite get there, but he will now. Celia, tries to get to the point, but waiting there are two kings. That's intercepted nicely. Kneeling back, side of the net! Colley trying his luck there, no such luck. From the point, that was Wari, missing the net entirely, looking for a deflection, nobody there. And now the kings will clear the zone. Off the glass, they'll start a change. A little bit of a collision there. Sliding back into his own end on defense. There's Wari. He's back up, no worse for wear. The Kings now from their own zone. Stevens looks for his man, can't find him. And that will be chopped up and out of play. Coming together there, Torzok for the Clippers. We saw that. We saw that hit. We're going to see it again here. And uh, just, you know, finishing your check. Rubbing him out on the boards, and, and Wari just uh, lit it probably a little further than he wanted to. I wanted to talk a little bit about the head-to-head uh, -head matchups this year. Powell River broke a close game wide open. First time they were in this building this year. They won 9-1. They got six goals in the third period. So, you know, I don't expect that tonight, but this team does have a lot of offense, and so does Nanaimo. If you give these teams chances, they'll hurt you. And so they're getting a chance now. Turnbull, low shot saved by Berman. Kick outside. They try the other side. Still Powell River into the corner. Cleared off it though, and there will be a call on that. Hooking the call there, and it looks like the first penalty of the evening will be assessed against the Clippers. Well, I think uh, Max Crozier might have a case on that one. That was, uh, uh, you know, it was a little soft. He was just pushing his guy, and he got a penalty for it. I don't, I don't think he got a stick up or an elbow up or anything, so he's, he's probably not happy with it. I mean, it, this really wasn't. You can see it right there. There's a little bit of tuck. It is, it is a perhaps a bit soft. Trimble bringing his hands down there to clutch on the blade. But regardless, you put your stick up like that. In someone's midsection. You're just inviting trouble. And Maxwell Crozier will sit. But fortunately for him, the Kings power play off to a bit of a rough start as they're forced to retreat. Well, I didn't see that grab, so it looks like <laughs> video got me on that one for sure. That's why we have it. You're watching BCHL hockey here on Shaw TV. Taro and Kyle Christensen up in the booth with you. Chad Brennan down at Ice Level. Thank you for joining us tonight, everybody, for this Island Rivals matchup between the Nanaimo Clippers and the Powell River Kings. Bit of a mistake there by Adonik, and that's going to be buried. Short-handed goal. Disaster at the back for Adonik. He tries to start the power play back up, and he ends up whiffing horribly. And it's a shorty to open things up for Tyler Crozier. 
Tristan Crozer, Tristan excuse Crozer. me. Well, he's he's one of the power play specialists on this team, and he's, he's noted for scoring power play goals, but this is a shorty that he'll take all year long. I mean, this was just gift wrapped with a bow. It's a little late for Christmas, but that was a late Christmas present for Tristan Crozer. Absolutely. I'm sure he's thrilled with that. You gotta be every time you bag a shorty, and that is gonna put the up one nothing. Not even five minutes into this contest. He's now setting up. Less than a minute to go on the power play. They aren't going in far with that. Almost trying to break there was Colley. But he will indeed get control of it. Looks for some help. Calling for it at the side of the net there. Hit from behind, no call there. Finishing it up with Stevens and makes sure his presence is felt. Well defended in the end, they save. Up the middle now. Low shot on target, Berman is there. Turnbull not able to pierce the armor. Well, just Tristan Kroger, I mean, you just talk about, you know, getting into the right spots, and he gets into the right spot here, and doesn't miss. I mean, that one, a, a younger, more inexperienced player might try to walk in with it. That was good to just rip it. Adama couldn't stop it. Good start for Nanano. Rolling puck, bouncing puck, just hammer it as hard as he can. Does the right thing. We talked up top about Adama maybe facing some fatigue. That's the first time we've seen of it, Kyle. For Adama's case, hopefully more to come. They say no offside at the point there. It looked pretty close. Through a scramble, trying to dig away at it. Was later not able to get to it, and it will be cleared back down the ice. And that should do it for the penalty, and that is indeed it. First penalty of the night killed off with style by the Clippers. And a shorthand goal out of it. Shots currently tied at three apiece. As the Kings look for a way out of their own zone. Volpe there. On the side he goes, finds Schmunk. Close down quickly. A bit of a scramble play there. That'll be flipped over the glass. Faceoff should come back outside the line there. I believe it came off of a king last. Our last broadcast in Couch and Valley, we talked about how the Capitals had this magic number at that point in the year. Every game they won, they scored five goals. Well, Nanaimo's magic number in January is five goals. They've won two games when they've scored five or more. They've lost two when they haven't scored it. But Powell River sort of, sort of puts that trend to bed because they've scored less than five goals in all three of the games they've played, and they've got three points out of a possible six. Collision there as the Clippers try their breakout, but corralled now. They pass up the middle, tipped to the side! Smothered by Adamic, though not for a lack of effort there. And that looked like Boren Van Robles trying to connect on a nice little one-timer tip there at the side of the net. Ultimately, well, nothing happens. I think we're going to get a look at this, and I mean, this this might be making up for that goal because Adamic just stretches across, makes a beautiful save, and you know, great goaltenders have a tendency to put bad goals in their in their memory bank, and they can become tougher and tougher to beat. And that was a terrific save by Adamic. Excellent save. Sticks the leg out, stuffs the post, and we remain at 1-0. This is Stevens now for the Kings. Shakes off one check, keeps going. Over the middle, batted back, uh, not with a high stick, says the ref. And play continues. This is Turnbull now, top line out here for the Kings. Turns it over though. Swatted to the blue line and tipped clear. And no ice for this one, Stevens will reconnect, or recollect rather, for the Kings. Pass nearly picked off. But it will be up soon to trying to break out. Can't get past the center line. There's two Clippers swarm on him. There will be a penalty on the play, and it will be going against the Kings. Uh, possibly too many men. Or some sort of bench minor. There was a lot of confusion there at the bench, right near the gate. Two Clippers pouncing on up suit there. And well, it will be up suit actually going to the box. He, he took somebody with him, though. He took Van Roboys with him, so it should be even strength. Incidental minor is there. It's good to see that aggressive nature there from the Clippers, but you've got to keep it in check. Could have been a potential advantage there, nullified. To draw that one won by the Clippers. Rarity so far tonight. I'll be thankful for it. 
Here's Kawamura now for the Kings. And just to find his line mate, Sooth. I have Sooth in the box, I'm sorry. Pimple. And it is now Crozier. Back for the Clippers. Dermenji, number 20 there for the Clippers. A call up for tonight. Big chance for him to try and impress the big club. And so far playing on a line with Mazur and Torzok. Two guys to watch on the Nanaimo. Wow, pardon me, they're not on the power play. I kind of got ahead of myself. Yes, they are so, even strength, but uh, maybe we'll just set the stage for later in the in the period or the game. Uh, Crozier and Jake Harris have 16 power play goals between them this year. So we talked off the top about how Kyle River has to keep it clean and stay out of the box, and that's part of the reason why. Chance of Kyle Murray he can't get around his man, but there will be a call on that. Interference the call, not a hard one to see there. Kamara had his man being just taken out of the play fairly cleanly. And it'll be Maxwell Crozier going right back to the box. Well, you know, uh, Maxwell Crozier doesn't want to spend this much time in the box, but it worked out well for him the first time. They got a shorthanded goal out of it. And that's, yeah, two penalties in, in less than eight minutes for Max Crozier. Very nearly picked off at the point there, but Brodziak able to get that down the ice, kill some time off for the penalty killers. And the Kings will slowly make their way out now through center. Turnbull trying to cross the line was held up just enough for the offside. Well, that was a reach in by Tristan Crozier at the blue line, and he, he couldn't get the puck, but he did kind of ruin their flow, and they went offside as a result, so, you know. You'll, you'll kill a penalty however you can, and that's one way to do it. Turnbull and Szymanski out for this power play, along with Evans. This is Evans with the puck now. Tipped in, met quickly. This is Tristan Crozier, as the shorthanded goal, and so far the only goal of the game so far, sitting right back down the ice. Stevens now. He'll take it up himself, the defender. Stopped the line, excellent stick work. And this is another shorthanded chance for the Clippers streaking down the line, but quickly manhandled, and that will be a penalty. A little too aggressive there with the hold. And going to the box will be number 14, Szymanski. Well, it's just not a good penalty to take. You can't, you can't do that, especially when you're on a power play and you're down one nothing. I mean, that's just an unnecessary penalty and the coaching staff's not gonna like that one very much. So we get about uh, 54 seconds of four on four hockey here. Kings win the face off. And starting up from the back will be Volpe. Banks it off the end boards. Looking for someone on the far side, he'll find his defensive partner, Bono. Back to Volpe. Koblenz trying to get control of it, can't. Back goes to Volpe. He's down on the end boards, looking for it there. It's Worry. And clear it though. Bit of a scramble, and we'll go back behind the Clippers net. Berman looks on. And there's a good pick there by the Kings. Around they go, and he can't find the target. The blends with a gift wrap chance there. Just not able to keep the handle on it and get it on the net. And Berman happy to watch that sail over. Nice move there by Delisle. Tries to get around his man a little dipsy do. Tries short side, nothing doing. Almost gets it back there with the move at the point there by Milaragni. And he will get a chance now, but swing and a miss, trying for the tip. Can't get it connected. Milaragni now deep here for the Clippers. Gets it on net, looking for the tip. Pushed aside by Adamic. And down the ice it goes, and Berman will wait for it there. Shielding it nicely. Malaragni, under some pressure, still with it. This is good pressure by Kawamura. Couldn't keep a hold of it that time. It covers nicely, though, to get it out at least to the sideboard, to the half wall. And the Clippers having real trouble here clearing the zone. They are on the power play here. But with only 10 seconds left in it, it'd be a bit of a chance wasted. Boys in black. Up the middle they go now. This is Lynn. This pass is picked off quickly. And back the other way. It's 
Evans. Sucking out. Looks in the middle, finds Turnbull. Turnbull! Can't find the target. Follow up saved by Berman. Streaking in there late for a shot of his own. With Samansky. Berman equal to the challenge. Well, Powell River, a lot of their shots missing high so far in this first period. Taz Berman's a really good goaltender. He moves well laterally. He takes the bottom of the net away, but the radar lock's a little off right now, I think, for Powell River because they've missed a lot of shots up high so far in this first period. The official shot clock says five to four for the Powell River Kings. You can only imagine how much higher that would be, Kyle. They can hit the target more than once every so often. Well, and that turnover in deep in the Nanaimo end where Koblenz, I believe it was, walks in, backhands it, and misses the net entirely. I, I don't know how you miss the net on a backhand like that. That is, that is a fantastic backhand, but it's a little too good. Here he comes. He has Berman moving, and if he puts that one high and on target, it's probably a goal. And, you know, he just gets under it. Puck may be rolling a little bit, but, you know, those are the opportunities where, you know, it's, it's, it's cliche, but it's also very true. You have to capitalize on opportunities like that. Take the Nanaimo goal so far. Absolutely. Like Berman was slightly beat on the far side up high. There was space, but it's not that much. Another turnover here in the Nanaimo end. This is becoming a bit of a theme. Eventually, the Kings have to cash in, but with Berman down and out, not able to pull the trigger there was Absuth. And Booker still can't clear the zone. Crozier now. Sends it to his partner, Wari. Wari taking his time, thinking carefully, and Crozier will clear the zone finally. Unfortunately, it's gonna come right back. It's unable to corral that pass with Celia. And it'll be right back down on the Clippers' end for a face-off on that icing call. Well, I feel like Captain Obvious, Captain Obvious should be standing in my spot right now, but the, both teams have been very sloppy in the first period. And, and there's Obstuth. He kind of deked himself out on that one. He kind of let the puck get into, into, into his feet, and he just couldn't get the puck on net. He did well to dig it out of his feet, though. It was a nice little move, just no power behind it. That's the kind of first period it's been, I think, on both sides, Powell River especially, they just seem like they just can't get the puck to sit for them. Maybe they'll get a chance now. Wraparound 10 blocked there. They go back to the point, Berard. Tipped, goes behind harmlessly. Hops over the stick there, Crozier. And the 50 kicks does just get out. Meeting, at the, meeting his man at the center there. At the midline, Samansky. And now Collie with a return hit on him. King's now breaking out. Gerard looking for the puck in his feet. Attempting for the pass there was Raffler. Defender not able to find his target. And now up the other way for the Clippers comes Van Robois. And with that attack thwarted, it'll be the Kings the other way. Nice job there on defense. Laying down, blocking the shot by the Gervais, stuffing the Powell River attack. But back and forth we go through the neutral zone. Nobody really able to get a clean playthrough here. Breakthrough, excuse me. Now perhaps we will. McBean trying to get a shot on target there. Can't get past his man. Kimball doing well to get in the way. In the half wall here. Now Powell River will clear the zone. Nice little chip there from Kimball. Clears the zone but can't get through cleanly. And waiting for him there was McBean. Now Clippers up the middle. Well, can't do much with that. Neither could Van Robois. And now there will be a call here. Hit with a high stick, it looks like. Brandon Marinelli, number seven. You hear, you see him talking to the officials right now. They, they brought him in from Ontario, and he's kind of like Taz Berman is in net. Taz Berman has been a stabilizing force for the Clippers in goal, and Marinelli would fit that description on, on the blue line. He has been a tower of strength for them on defense. Clippers quickly off that one face off. Get the puck down nice. Shot on target saved by Adamic. The chance there was Crozier. Top line out here for the Clippers. But it's cleared by the Kings and now this is, he has to be very careful there as Miller Ragney. With Kimball and company on his tail. Kamal Kawamura there. Looking for the turnover. 
Kings will keep it in deep and they'll do a change here of their defensive pairing. Breaking out now is Malaragni. Nice little move there to skip the check. Chips it across the face of goal. Nothing doing. Babbage now. Can't keep it in. And so the Kings trying to intercept, but they won't. Waiting back there was Crozier who gets it to Warren, who gets it out. This is Mazer now. So fourth line action here for the Clippers. And they get something started, perhaps. Waiting in the middle there was Torzok. Never truly found his way there. Warrior can only get as far as center. Now bring back in here all the Kings. Turnbull gets the shot on target. Berman equal to it. On a difficult shot for him to turn aside. However, that is not a difficult shot to score if you're the Kings. And we are all tied at one with the laser one-timer. Berard has this a tie game at 1-1. Well, this is the line that did most of that damage in the third period in that 9-1 game here earlier in the year. You know, Turnbull, Evans, you know, and this this is just a nice play behind the net, finds the open man, throws it out in front, and, you know, obviously, good job, good read, and got a puck to settle on a stick, and they were able to find the back of the net. Berman committed down low, Absuth read that. Much like the Crozier goal, did not waste any time. Hammered the one-timer, got it on target. Back of the net, tie game. Sharp angle stop by Berman. He's move out the other way. Looking to center. This Lynn couldn't find his man. Back of the way comes the Kings. This is Stevens, defender way out ahead of the play. He will dance around. Get a pass, Berman. They get there at center ice as the goal is right out there. Evans from Absuth. Trying to hit the target there with Cilia. Couldn't do it, but kept it at the line. By Bill Isle. Pinch there is a good one there by Crozier. Trying to beat Melaragna out wide. It's Kawamura. He will get it back in the end, Kawamura. And it's Koblenz. A tangle there in the faceoff circle. Ref lets it go. And while it looked threatening, Kings never able to really crystallize that into something, and it must be cleared down. Dominic will calmly steer it to one side. Stripped of the puck, here. Pouliot centered. Loose puck, not able to be pounced on by anybody. And this time, Adamic able to see that puck through traffic and hangs onto it. Right in front of the net, Bill Isle and Vanderboys trying to find that rebound, nothing doing. Some big hits we're seeing this period here, Kyle. Well, here's just a great hit and stick by Parker Colley. They both go down, but you know, you, you want to get possession of the puck back, and that's exactly what that one did. Miller Agney, just nice job following through, finishing the check on the boards against Kawamira, and you know, the big guy in front of the net was number 15, Joshua Bourne. He's actually a member of the Chase Heat in the Kootenai International Junior Hockey League. He's one of their leading scorers this year. But Nanaimo's very high on him. He's got a lot of size. He's got some touch, too, in front of the net. He's out here now. Brodzak, excuse me. And back it comes. A little tip there by Brodzak. Just to play alive. It negates any chance of an icing goal, but unfortunately not able to do anything with it. But now some nice pressure here by the Clippers as the Kings try to break out. And that pressure does result in a turnover. A little backhand pass there by Crozier. Tristan Crozier. And Volpe will recover for the Kings. Can't beat the press, but he's got some help here. And Kings will clear the zone. It's to Kimball. He will dump it down. Nice start a wholesale change. And Maxwell Crozier. 
goes right back the other way. Both teams changing up here. Stevens under pressure. Probably not able to win the puck back. Take the hip check there is awry. Coming in now is Evans. Loses it. Pass there is missed. Stevens will recover for the Kings. Pops was trying to get a pass there from Evans. Nothing doing. This is Evans now. Dips it in. Chases. Goes in on McBean. McBean's able to calmly clear that around the corner. And here comes the Clippers the other way. Two on two. Hope arriving in the form of Lynn, but the puck is already lost. Back the other way. Turnbull's still out here. Centered again. That one did come off the net, possibly off of Berman as well. No one quite alert to that odd bounce, and it's the Clippers coming away with it. This is Bill Isle now. Gets it out wide. Send it down low. High and wide. Good point, Malaragni. Tipped. Nice tip there by Bill Isle, but straight at Adamic. Well, Brad Bill Isle, he's, he's one of these guys who he's starting to figure out his body. He's, he's kind of uh, getting more physical as the year goes on. He gets in front, he gets a nice tip on. And he's one of these guys where you know, he, he's tough to move in front of the net, and it takes a lot of energy to move guys like him out from in front of the net, and that's just a nice little slick tip and a, a better save by Adamic. And another one straight off the faceoff one-timer by Bill Isle. Adamic saw that all the way, able to make the save. That's exactly how you draw off a faceoff. You win a draw, you one-time it off, off the draw, and you know, a lot of the time the goaltenders aren't really ready for a shot that quickly. You know, I remember that goal that the LA Kings scored in Boston. It took .5 seconds right off an offensive zone faceoff win. And here, crashing the net. The Kings not able to get it past Berman there. A little one-two, unfortunately couldn't keep the handle. Stevens and Pouliot back here for the Kings, and now this is Swanski. Swanski just chips it in. Centered, oh, what a one-timer, what a goal! from a, what a, looked like a harmless little tip in or chip in. Turns into a goal, another one-timer beating Berman. 2-1 for the Power River Kings as we are under a minute to go in the first. Well, that was just a, a really nice pass out in front by Berard and a nice finish as well. Keep your stick on the ice, isn't that what? Uh, Red uh, Green, I believe. Red Green always said keep your stick on the ice. Here's why. Keep your stick on the ice. The puck might find it. Just and like that. In the net. Williams, the defender, trailing on the play, getting the goal there. So Dominic will glove down that bouncing puck. Mitchell Williams with the 2 1 goal here for the Kings. And again, looks like a harmless clearance, but great follow up on that play by Williams, steaming in from the back. Yeah, and the, the Nanaimo defense is too slow to react, and the guy got behind him and was able to get that goal and two to one Powell River now. It was kind of a sleepy start for the Kings, but they've really started to get it going in the last couple minutes. 30 seconds to go here in the first period. Two one Kings. Breakout from a very tight check. There was uh, Williams again. And Berard now down low, trying to fish it out and skates to Crozier. Crozier turns around, takes his man. Still can't clear it though, and this is Powell River down low. They've been dangerous here. Centers, and the points through traffic. No problem there for Berman. Well, it's important that you, you're you square to that shot, you get a face off, because the last thing the Nile needs right now is another goal against with less than six seconds left in the period. Nothing like that end of period kick to the gut, just, to, just when you think you're out. Well, the ones inside 10 seconds are even probably about 10 times worse. Absolutely. But it looks like they'll be safe here. Let's put the stick to the corner. And that will be the first period. It ends Powell River Kings 2, Nanaimo Clippers 1. Crozier opened things up with a shorty 
And then uh, it was Evans and Williams for Powell River to tie the game and then take the lead. You're watching Island Rivals on Shaw TV. This is BCHL Hockey. Coming up in the first intermission, Chad Brennan will be interviewing Alex Ronsley. So stay tuned for that. So, so far, Kyle, we have, uh, it was a little bit slow to start, but once it got going, it was quite good. And here to tell us more about it, down at ice level, Chad Brennan. Well, thank you very much, Kyle and Retiro. An exciting game. Last minute goal there from Powell River, bringing us to two to one, Powell River. Uh, as mentioned upstairs, yes, uh, this intermission, we're gonna be speaking a little bit later uh, with uh, broadcasting and media relations uh, for the Powell River Kings, Alex Ronsley. Get his thoughts on the team and how they're getting geared up for the playoffs. But first, an exciting segment coming up here as we uh, go and look at ice clips with Dan Marshall. Neat thing with the new uh, coach, Darren Naylor. We're going to see our, how well our Nanaimo Clippers know their brand new coach. Welcome to Ice Clips, I'm Dan Marshall. Today we're going to get to know new Clippers head coach, Darren Naylor. He's only been at the helm a few weeks, but the team already has a great record, and they're already in first place under his leadership in the Island Division. We invited three Nanaimo Clippers to see how well they know their new coach, Tristan Crozier, Brad Belial, and Brady Lynn. Tristan Crozier, how well do you think you know your new coach? Very well. Brad Belial, how well do you think you know the new coach? Very well also. Brady Lynn, do you think you know the new coach better than these guys? Yeah. <laughs> Let's start the game. Seven questions, multiple choice, and we're gonna ask these Clipper players to write down their answer to multiple choice questions about the coach. All of these are true, starting with number one. So I've had a dog for eight months now. Can you tell me what my dog's name is? Is it A, tough as nails? B, Willie Naylor? Or C, Naily Naylorson? All right, Tristan Crozier, you get to answer first. Willie Naylor. Brad Belial. Naily Naylorson. What is the coach's dog's name, Brady Lynn? Willie Naylor. The correct answer is? My dog's name is Willie Naylor. Crozier won, Belial nothing, and Lynn won. Question number two. The last two seasons I've coached in the PGHL, which team did I coach? Was it A, Richmond Sockeyes, B, Coquitlam Express, C, Delta Icehawks? Delta Icehawks. Brad Belau, what's your answer? C, Delta Icehawks. Brady Lynn, what did you write? Delta Icehawks. The correct answer is? The team I coached was the Delta Icehawks. All three got that one correct. We have Crozier two, Belial one, Lynn two. On to question number three. Before every game, I like to have a favorite drink. What is my favorite drink? Coke Zero. The answer is Coke Zero. Question number four with the score, Tristan Crozier three, Brad Belial two, Brady Lynn three. The fourth question. In my last season of junior A hockey, what team did I win a national championship with? Was it A, Vernon, B, Penticton, or C, New Westminster? Tristan Crozier, what's your answer? C, New Westminster. Brad Bilal, what's your answer? A, Vernon. Brady Lynn? Vernon. The correct answer is? The Vernon Lakers. Brady Lynn four, Brad Bilal three, Tristan Crozier three, on to question number five. What is my favorite color? Is it A, red, B, blue, or C, dark green? Tristan Crozier, what's your coach's favorite color? C, dark green. Brad Belau, what's the coach's favorite color? Dark green. Brady Lynn, what do you think it is? Red. My favorite color is red. Brady Lynn, five. Brad Belau, three. Tristan Crozier, three. As we move on to question number six. Myself and my assistant coach, Bob Puglietta, played together in the Western Hockey League for which team? Was it A, the Charlestown Chiefs, B, the Victoria Cougars, or C, the Kamloops Blazers? Tristan Crozier, you have an answer. What's your answer to the team the coaches both played for? C, Kamloops Blazers. Brad Belau, what do you think? B, Victoria Cougars. And Brady Lynn? Victoria Cougars. The correct answer is? What is the Victoria Cougars? Brady Lynn, six. Brad Belisle, four. Tristan Crozier, three. With one more question, 
to go. I was once a scout in the Western Hockey League. For which team? Was it A, Brandon Weekings? B, Kootenai Ice? C, Seattle Thunderbirds? Tristan Crozier, what's your answer? B, Kootenai Ice. What do you think, Brad Malau? B, Kootenai Ice. And Brady Lynn? Kootenai Ice. Everyone said Kootenai Ice, and they were all wrong. The correct answer was What is the Seattle Thunderbirds? Brady Lynn gets six out of seven. Brady, congratulations. You know Coach Darren Naylor the best of all your teammates. Today we got to know head coach Darren Naylor. He's brand new to the Clippers and Brady Lynn does have a bit of a history, so it's not a huge surprise that he won. Fans will get to know the new coach and this Nanaimo Clipper team down the stretch as they look to win first place in the Island Division. For Ice Clips, I'm Dan Marshall. Well, congratulations to uh, congratulations to Brady Lynn. I wonder if he's going to get himself a little extra ice time for uh, winning the challenge there. That's great. Two to one uh, for Powell River over the Nanaimo uh, Clippers. Uh, we're here on BCHL Live, and uh, I'm welcoming here Alex Ronsley, broadcasting and media relations uh, with the Kings. Since 2011, you called over 350 games for Powell River and uh, was uh, named co-BCHL Broadcaster of the Year in 2016. I also hear you're originally from Australia. How does a guy from Australia fall in love with ice hockey? Uh, it happened in Prince George, uh, funnily enough. Enough. The, the guy that I went up to Prince George to replace uh, working at the television station up there uh, was with the Prince George Spruce Kings at the time and he gave me an opportunity to, to work with Williams Lake for a couple of games and from there it just evolved. I did some major midget with Caribou and then have been in Powell River since 2011 and, and love living on the Sunshine Coast. Fantastic. Well, you do much beyond play-by-play -play, uh, with the Kings. Tell us a little bit about uh, your other roles with the team. Yeah, pretty much everything technical. Uh, you know, hockey coaches aren't necessarily known for being the, the greatest with computers, so I was actually texting with one of our coaches earlier today, and uh, he was asking me about uh, channel listings for the show broadcast tonight, and he's like, if there's anything remotely technical, I just start calling you. I don't even try. So um, a lot of technical support with the team, uh, managing some equipment, uh, helping out our marketing staff as well with, with game event promotions and things like that, and uh, doing some graphic design and, and uh, standing in a small room with a microphone talking to an invisible audience 58 times a year. So, Well, well great. Uh, from your unique perspective, tell us a little bit about how the season's going so far. What do you like up till now? I love the experience and I love the depth on this Powell River Kings team. Uh, a number that we threw out at the start of the season was, was 400, and that was the number of regular season BCHL games that this Kings defense had in game one against the Victoria Grizzlies back in September and that's only grown since then and I think that's been the Kings real strength this season has to be in the ability to lean on different guys each and every night and this hasn't necessarily been the Ben Barads, the Carter Turnbulls uh, you know on, on any one given night players like Hunter Finlater have gone about uh, their business very very quietly and putting up a solid 12 goals Josh Koblenz you already saw through 20 minutes worth of play here having an excellent games and just uh, doing what Josh Koblenz does um, you know a guy like Gavin Rouser brings so many intangibles to the roster as well so I think the depth and, and the the talent both up front and on the back end uh, has really helped the Kings this season they've been able to lean on a, bu a bunch of different guys and then they'd be able to have two quality netminders uh, Matteo Pelicciao unfortunately injured at the moment uh, however uh, Mitch Adamic has, has been excellent this year and, and Pelicciao when he's been in the net has done uh, everything that's been required of him and much more. That's great. Well, hey, there's six weeks left in the season. We're coming down to playoff time. It's getting serious now. What does the team need to focus on? I think just getting back to what's made them successful so far this regular season, and that's been a real struggle uh, through the month of December where, where there were some tough games and the, the, the final road trip before Christmas was uh, indicative of that, having a 6-3 lead in West Kelowna with 10 minutes to play and wind up tying that game 6-6 six, six, uh, through 70 minutes worth of play. And even post-Christmas break as well, the Kings uh, have strayed a little bit from what's made them successful, and Kent Lewis has been hopping on that and, and wanting to get his team back to the fundamentals and playing what he calls Kings hockey, and that's being still stingy defensively and giving up you know less than 24 shots on goal it's it's getting the clearances out of the king's zone on the first try it's it's generating second and third opportunities which the kings weren't able to do last night against salmon arm uh, and just playing fundamental hockey power river you know through 30 seasons now plus uh, what we've gone through here this year uh, has been just a simple team it's never been a team that's been that run and gun it's never been a team that's been you know high skill that highlight real stuff every single night it's been a team that's outworked opposition and for every you know, eight two nine one scoreline that the Kings have had. There'll be a dozen two one three two scores out there as well. 
Well, thank you very much, Alex Ronsley. It's great having you with us. Pleasure. Alex Ronsley, Broadcasting and Media Relations for the Powell River Kings. Great to have you with us and great to have you here. 2-1 Powell River over the Nanaimo Clippers. Next up, we have the locker room flashback from 2005. It's called Sports City. Little Robert Rodriguez take on Sin City. Uh, here you go and enjoy the future. Goalie's dead. And I've been framed for murder. Extreme Joe, open up. Police. I'll be right out. Ah. Oh, Ellie, my shoulder. <laughs> Just couldn't leave him to the law, eh? Your days of vigilante justice and Unnecessary roughness are over, Extreme Joe. Nice coat. The breeze smells foul in the streets of Sports City. Goalie's alive. I can feel it. This is nothing more than a trap. Not just a trap, a thoughtfully contrived strategy to lure me deep into the goalie's merciless crease. He thinks he can stop the locker room, but I will prevail. It's time to prove to my friends that I'm worth something. Get in. I know where he's hiding. We drive to the crease in Old Town, a backwards place where the goalie is a role model and the games have no officiating. I was glad to have Holly on my team. Wow! We don't get too many celebrities around here. Hi. We're looking for the goalie. Eyes to the stage, pilgrims. He's just warming up. Got it? Yep. Walk down the right alley in Sports City, and you can find anything. The 2018 Bel Air Direct BC Men's Curling Championship, January 31st to February 4th at the Parksville Curling Club. Teams from across the province will compete to represent BC at the National Championship. The final four games will air live on BC Shaw TV stations and stream online for viewers across the country. The 2018 Bel Air Direct BC Men's Curling Championship, only on Shaw TV. If you're living on Vancouver Island and you're not retired, you're probably doing something quirky to make a living. I'm Sheena McCorkadale. I am a graphic artist. They are portraits of cats placed on old master paintings. I have an art gallery, a cat kennel, and I do ceremonial white dove releases. One, two, three. I have just over 50 doves. They're all white, so they don't have names. They are white rock doves that are crossed with homing pigeons and racing pigeons. This is Grandpa. You can see that he still has some of the flex. They've been known to fly up to 1,000 miles. For myself, I've actually let them go from West Vancouver and they come home. Doves over the centuries have been associated with peace, love, freedom. They incorporate themselves into events very easily. And cage number one would be a wedding. Engagement. Memorial, anniversary, special events. Rivals, noun, a person or thing competing with another for the same objective or for superiority in the same field of activity. 
The BCHL is back live on Shaw TV. Things will heat up on the ice as Island rivals face off against one another up and down and all around Vancouver Island. Five teams are all fighting one another to claim the status of Island champs. Tune in for our monthly Island matchup only on Shaw TV. Welcome back to BCHL Hockey Live here on Shaw TV. Chad Brennan, your host. Uh, two to one is the story here. Two to one for the Powell River Kings over the Nanaimo Clippers. Shots on goal have been close as well for Nanaimo nine for Powell River 11. On the power play, it's been zero for two for Powell River. They haven't needed their power play. They've got a late minute goal to take the lead. And Nanaimo has gone zero for one. Not really a full power play for them. They only had a minute on the power play, so they didn't have a chance to get their big power play offense rolling and on the go. Uh, for the scoring summary, a shorthanded goal opening the goal or opening the scoring for the Nanaimo Clippers. Tristian Crozier uh, making it 1 0. Uh, then from Powell River, Evans uh, making it 1 to 1. And then that last minute goal we spoke about earlier from Mitchell Williams right there. Johnny on the spot there tipping it in uh, from the great call upstairs from uh, Kyle, Carroll, uh, Kyle Christensen and Rituro. Uh, lots coming up for you in the second intermission. Don't forget to hang out with us there. We've got an interview coming up with Bob Faglietta, or Faglietta from uh, the Nanaimo Clippers assistant head coach. Uh, but we're going to throw things upstairs now to the booth for our call for the second period and go over some headlight, uh, head, or highlights. Uh, here it is up in the booth. Uh, it's Kyle and Rituro. Thank you, Chad. Thank you so much. Welcome up to the broadcast booth here at Frank Crane Arena. Kyle Christensen, my name is Rituro. Now, off the top here, Kyle, we worried if going to double overtime in his last game would hurt Adamic, and we saw some evidence of that in that first goal, a shorthanded on a completely unnecessary error by Adamic. Well, it wasn't it was an unnecessary error because he, he kind of thought he had the puck, and then it kind of rolled off his stick when he tried to shoot it, and that was great news for Tristan Crozier. He comes in and labels one. Actually, he didn't really label it. He shot it right through him. So a one nothing start for Nanaimo. That was a good start for them. Powell River, to their credit, had a couple opportunities, took advantage of those opportunities, and they are sitting with a 2-1 lead after a period. And that's exactly where you want to be on the road because it, it's, some, it's hard to come into this building, especially in the last couple of months, and go into the break with a lead, and that's what Powell River has right now. We talked about that magic number being five. We'll see if either team hits here as we look at the highlights from this first period. Here's that little whiff there by Mitch Adamic and puts his head down and hammers it as you'd want Tristan Crozier to do. Well, he just kind of took his eye off it and he put, threw it out in front to the wrong guy. Tristan Crozier, one of the one of the best scorers on Nanaimo, and he did not miss. But Adamic makes up for it there. Just a nice stretch across, makes a beautiful save. And I mean, if this goes 2-0, you never know what happens. So Adamic keeps his team in it at that point. And then here is just some hard work and Hoblins gets an opportunity. And look at that backhand, it's just a little oh. too good. He puts it way over everything. This is the bar there by about a foot off the giveaway there by Wari, but they would get it back, the equalizing goal. Well, that was just a nice pass by Obstuth right in front to Evans. Johnny Evans had a really good game in here in the 9-1 victory for Powell River earlier in the year. And give him, an, give him a look like that. He's not going to miss too often. And this is the other one. Watch 25. Williams keeps his stick on the ice and puts it in all day to put it in. Got behind the, the, the Clippers' defense. They kind of forgot about him, and he makes them pay 2-1. to one. Big hits there as well, right in the middle of the ice. It was a little bit sloppy at times, but that didn't stop both teams from mixing things up. Big hit there by Colley. On that second goal there as well from the Kings, I do want to point out, uh, I've been calling <laughs> calling a number 25, uh, Williams, I've been calling him a defender for most of the game. He's actually listed as a forward. He's been uh, deputized, as it would be, as a defender for this game, but he's still got those offensive instincts, and he had them on full display in that first period. So as we get ready for the second here, Adamic in the green and white on our broadcast right. Well, yes, we're on our broadcast left. You can teach those those players like go for it if there's if there's room and your guy has a puck and they're forgetting about you go. But it's a lot more instinctive than anything because if you're a defensive-minded player, you're not gonna necessarily have the wherewithal to go in and, and do that. And I mean, well, that was instinct on Williams' part. He comes in with a stick on the ice 
And just a great pass finds him, and it's 2-1 to one as we start the second. Start the second, Williams has been moved back up to the wing. Stevens now back on defense with Samansky. And after that, quick whistle, we'll get another face off here. Williams having a decent season with the Kings. 31 games played, six goals, five assists, 11 points. Well, here's the look at that penalty. Miller Agney has it, and then there's just the slash and the takedown. If they're not going to get you on the slash, they're going to get you on the takedown. And, and one thing to note is Jake Harris, I'm pretty sure, is a scratch tonight for Nanaimo, which is, which is big news because the guy has 18 goals and 10 of them are power play goals. They could really use him on this advantage. Williams sitting, Tuber tripping. Still has worked the power play. Look at that! It doesn't get any easier. That wide open at the far post. It's Coleman's, I believe. Oh, I think that's going to be Babbage. I think he got a piece of it. He just kind of dusts it off at the side of the net, redirects it a little bit. And yeah, absolutely. I think that is Babbage. Babbage just kind of the kind of excuse me hack that that worked out for him, and yeah, he's been he's been pretty snake bit a lot this season. Well, well, we'll we'll see who they give this to, but I thought that Babbage maybe got a little bit of that. 13 seconds. That's all it takes on that power play. Some thought that, that might actually be Marinelli's. That may have gone clean in under Adamic's pad, but we'll see who they give it to in the end here. It'll be either Babbage or Marinelli. Back at the other end of the ice, though. Kings looking to respond quickly. Damn. Little dish there back at the point. Wristed on net from Volpe. But Berman up to the task. Well, I mean, I've been wrong before in this game. So Marinelli may get that one. But I thought it, I thought it changed direction off of Babbage's stick. But it, if you ask the Nanaimo bench, they really don't care. It's two, it's two all, and maybe we get a better look at it. No, we don't have it. But uh, I thought Babbage, you know, redirected it. But we'll have to wait and see. But either way, two all. These teams like to play close games, and we have another one here tonight. Like you said, either way, it's uh, it's not good for the Kings. Bad enough that the goal was scored, and that Babbage was left all alone by himself in that power play. Box splitting pass there from Marinelli. So credit where credit is due. Well, they iced the puck here, and, and Nanaimo was trying to spring Brady Lynn. He's got a lot of speed. They're trying to, he's kind of like a rover. He's, he's, he's inside center ice between the center ice and the blue line, and they're trying to spring him because that would have been a one-on-one. -on -one. He's got lots of speed, and he's very shifty. That did not work as planned, goes for an icing. Cilia with the face-off win there, off the glass and out. And that actually lands right on the stick. Colley unable to control it, though. Back it goes where Marinelli is waiting. Tries to feed Colley again. But that will flip over his stick. Does deflect, though. No icing. And hounded in his own zone is Bono. Now this is, Co this is Kimball. Excuse me. Berman deals with that as the Kings change. Puts it off the glass and around. It will clear the zone. Pouliot. Back to deal with it. Stevens now. Casually wrists it. Side of the net. Crozier now. Looks long. He's got Cauley in his sights. Bouncing puck can't find him. Stevens will start the breakout for the Kings. Won't get any further than just inside the Nanaimo zone. Nice little dipsy do there by Pouliot. Not the cleanest breakout, but it will find the stick of Findlater. She leaves it in the corner. Back around it goes. Koblenz now deep. Finds Findlater. Hit off the puck there. And it will be Dermengian trying to go around the other side. Waiting for that was Mazur. He will manage to hack it out to center ice. Crozier pinching up high here at the center line. Puts it in on net as the young call-up. 
Menji and called into this game and uh, gets a shot on target for his efforts. So he'll have uh, at least some presence on the stat line, so good for him. Well, he's going to want a shot from a little closer <laughs> in than that. That, that shot came from about Shemanus. But, I mean, <laughs> when, when you when you talk about the, this Nanaimo team, that they're as I said, they're starting to try and sneak guys in behind Powell River. And what it does is it backs off the defenseman for the Kings. They have to honor the deepest player. And they've tried it a couple times in this period. I would expect Nanaimo's going to keep going to the well. We're starting to break out there. And able to get a shot on net. And back the other way come the Clippers. Babbage hit off the puck there. Trying to dig it out of his skates. It's Crozier. Tristan Crozier, that is. That shot well high and wide from Berard. Crozier flips it out. And offside there. Was it Mel Melaragni? Got a little bit ahead of himself. Well, it seemed like a delayed call on the offside, and that just drives coaches berserk. When you don't call it right away, and then you call it, the coaches start to think, well, you weren't sure about that, and I am, and I knew that it was an offside. Drives coaches bananas when you have a delayed offside call like that, but I think maybe it was the right call. I know one coach will certainly think so. The other may disagree. Such is the way of things. As the Kings now slips and falls, but in they go regardless. Evans, and that is a lovely setup for Rob Suth. Kevin Obsuth has the Kings back in the lead, 3-2. Good follow-up on the rebound. That's a great first save by Taz Berman, but he's left by himself, fending for himself. And, you know, Powell River, they're going to pot it. Obsuth has had a pretty good game, multiple point game for him now as he bats this one in. So he's got a goal and an assist in the first 24 minutes of this game. Good job getting his own rebound. Good job with Evans. Nice little behind, nice little feed there. A little spin to get away from his check. Easy little dish over. Thank you very much. Evans now also on two points, goal and an assist. Go, go! Just like that. Kings back in front. And looking for more. Deep in the Nanaimo zone. Puck is slipped to the zone and cleared. Clippers try to break and they will in a fashion. A little bit messy, but they get it there. Crozier cross ice. Bouncing puck. Can Adana keep it out? He will. Lurking there was Belisle. Not able to find anything. And now out wide. Comes Pal River. Shot from very sharp angle. Berman is there, no problem. And the breakout pass misses Van, Ro misses Van Royboys completely, and it will be an icing. Well, this is kind of the problem when you're trying these stretch passes like Nanaimo is. When you miss, it's an, it's an icing, and it's going back 200 feet the other way. And I mean, Powell River has been very good since they gave up that early goal, a shorthanded goal, that excuse me clearing attempt by Adamic. Powell River's been terrific since that point. Almost like a wake-up call for them as well. It's well, sharper. Certainly woke up the goaltender because you're sitting in your crease and you're, you know, you, when the play's at the other end, all you can do is sort of get into your own head and think about it. And, you know, he's he's made some great saves. Powell River has helped him out with some goals, but uh, that Obstuth goal, I mean, that's just a great job of putting a puck where he knew he might be able to get it back against Berman and made it 3-2 to two on him. And right there, trying to make it 4-2, in close. What can do, though? He'll try again. Comes with the earlier chance. Now down low is Kimball. Oliver switching their lines up here. They are short a player. It hasn't seemed to hurt them at all, though. But what it is hurting them is that misplayed pass all the way back to their own end. But hustling back is Pouliot. We have the danger only as far as the line, though. And McBean keeps it in. Pull out now. Behind his net. Starts out. Gets it forward. Waiting for help there. There's Berard. He does find Koblenz. He's being watched by Moragni. What's that? What's that? 
Gets it tied up there, and that gives all the impetus for Crozier to try and clear and can't get it past the line. Now down deep. And they do manage to just sneak it out of the point past Raffler. And back he goes, trying to break here. Bank pass here, looking for Brodziak. Can't find him. Wall of white jerseys there. And cross ice it goes. Raffler gains the zone. He's in there, Miller Agni. Rubs him out all the same. Schmunk. Digging in the heels, Findler and Brodziak, and they will finally clear This will be icing. And yes, it is. So some signs of pressure here are being shown by the Kings. Now starting to get a little more sustained time in the attacking zone, hemming the Clippers in, forcing these really sloppy clearances, and now another icing. Well, you said it, sloppy. This, this whole game has had, you know, large, large stretches where it's just very sloppy. Can't put two passes together, you know. And, and Powell River had four guys in the neutral zone within probably about 10 feet of each other. So both teams very sloppy tonight. It's so far in this 3-2 contest. Julio nearly losing out there, had to pinch for his life and does it, almost able to get free there. And he will actually draw the penalty on this. Is Williams. Wasn't able to get a hand on his stick because it was all tied behind his back, so this will end up being Powell River power play. Unless they score, they've already got the extra attacker on the ice. It's in skates and it is touched by a clipper. Call is made. For hooking. Just an update on the scoring. Cal Babich did get credit for that power play goal for Nanaimo. Kevin Obsuth, his 16th of the year from Johnny Evans, has given Powell River the lead back. So some, some multiple point games. Kevin Obsuth, Johnny Evans has a multiple point game too. And there, there's the shot on. and There's the hook right there. Is that's one of those ones where I think the coaching staff isn't going to be too upset about that because he did take away a scoring chance. Williams, if he's left alone, that's probably the 4-2 goal right there. As it stands, they now will have a power play to work with. Turnbull calling for it out wide. Although they didn't get there, as it goes straight to Berman. To be Berard out wide, they're calling for it. Turnbull not able to find him. Trimble, he definitely had eyes for goal here. Samansky in front providing the screen, but straight into the glove of Berman. And the penalty killers will get the puck down the ice. Power play starts out with a minute 40 to go. You got your, your heavy hitters on this power play if you're Powell River. Berard, Evans, and Turnbull. 18 goals apiece between Berard and Turnbull, and Evans is 13, well, 14 now. Evans sitting at the point, Stevens at his opposite number. Evans winds up, fakes the shot, goes to Stevens, also fakes his shot, cuts inside, still with it. Back across the board, this is Turnbull. Goes high, hits his own man. Being Samansky. Now Turnbull with a little bit of room. Way out of his crease there was Berman, but he comes back in time just in the nick of time to shut down Berard. Berard now being pinned behind the net by Gervais. Szymanski and now to help him out. Turnbull waiting as well. One clipper holding off three. Now here comes some help from, I believe that's Crozier? No, that is Wari. In front of now this is what Nanaimo wants. Tie that puck up, kill some time off. Now finally, a little bit of extracurriculars there. But regardless, Clippers got what they want and killed off a good chunk of that penalty. Now we're just, a, just under 40 seconds to go in the penalty to Melarangi. What a terrific job by Gervais. He probably killed 15 or 20 seconds in there, and then he got help, and he killed some more time. So just a terrific job putting the puck along the boards and not allowing three, at times four, kings to dislodge it. Just a terrific job on the penalty kill. He gets a well-deserved break. Crozier now wins the draw cleanly. Off the glass. Not quite out, though. Waiting at the point was Gervais. Excuse me. Was Volpe. One more chance here. You've got to think for the power play. If they can get the zone cleanly. Buono dumps it in. Waiting at the far corner. It's a black jersey, though. 
and it's now stolen back by Kovlenz, second unit here, from the point wide. Trying himself there, post Findlater. Couldn't pick his tarp quite well, Findlater down low. Kovlenz now, cross to the point. High shot, snared by Taz Berman. Well, that all that whole sequence started because of a lack of puck support in the Nanaimo zone, down deep. They were getting outnumbered and couldn't get the puck out, turned the puck over, Powell River got it, had a lot more zone time. So, I mean, puck support is it's going to probably be something that the coaching staff is harping on the bench right now because it's just not there at this point in the second period for Nanaimo. That's not the first time they were just getting outnumbered even strength. Power play finished. However, held off the board for that stretch of two minutes, so it remains a 3-2 game for the Kings. And now, with a little bit of time and space, was Kimball. But Berman able to see it cleanly, get a block, get a glove on it, and now a little more rough stuff in front of the net. Nothing further going to come there. Too many open looks and great spots for Powell River especially here in the second period. Look at this chance, right out in front, all day to just walk into it. I mean, the Nimo's gotta be a lot tighter in their own zone as Ethan Kimball had a long look to try and figure out a way past Taz Berman. I mean, the goalie can only do so much. If you have that much time, you're probably gonna find a hole on him. So, you know, the Nimo does really need to tighten it up defensively because Kyle River has time and space with great opportunities in the slot. Oh, that Kawamura was lurking in front, waiting for any rebounds. So Bourbon had to be sharp, smother that, and he did. And now the Clippers with a bit of a chance here, right up the middle. Pass back goes nowhere. Crozier did well to get free, looking for help. Unfortunately, not to be found. And the pressure now deep is Gervais. Tank for the zone, but still Clippers in possession. But stopped at the point. Low shot, easily smothered by Berman. I get the point there. Well, you look at the shots on goal this period, 11 for Powell River, only four for Nanaimo. And that's kind of a microcosm of this whole period. It was kind of a lazy shoot, shoot around the boards. Buono cuts it off, gets a chance. Could have probably walked in probably about five more feet and fires went on and Berman square, no rebound. He's been very good again tonight. Stevens off his face off win, can't control it. They'll have to retreat and regroup. It's at the zone, flipped in. By Raffler, he'll try and chase it down here, but he pinches and loses. It'll be slapped down the ice, but it will be icing. So A for effort there from the Clippers, but not so much for execution. And the puck comes right back. That's an icing, and, and Parker Colley just had no gas left to try and beat that icing call out. That said, if you're going to ice the puck right before the mid-period timeout is probably the best time to do it. Well, that's a very good point you make, and both teams are going to be having probably very different conversations at their respective benches right now. I mean, Powell River's got to love the way this game has gone so far. They had that horrible start. They were down early. Less than four minutes in, they were down one nothing, and they've come back and played a very good road game. So and there, here, there we, that was credited to Babich, I believe. I think he squeaked it past the pad, and yes, you can see there's just a little bit of a hint there. Hopes it past the outstretched skate, Danik, but here is getting his own rebound as Absuth. Well, and look at the room. Look at the room he has to just walk in, follow it up, and get it in. And it's like we talked about. In, five minutes ago. There's just way too much room for the Kings in the offensive zone right now for Nanaimo, and they really have to tighten it up because you, you got 11 shots against in this period, and it's only half over, and you only have four shots. It's not trending in, in your favor right now, and, and that's probably something something like that was what was discussed at the bench. We were seeing Gervais' praises not that long ago and his penalty killing on that goal. Very guilty of puck watching there, not moving his feet leaving off all that time to grab his own rebound as Berman snares the bouncing puck and get another defensive zone face off for the Clippers. Well, I'm not even a goalie and, and those long flutter, flutter balls that bounce on the ice before they get to the net, they just make me nervous. I can't imagine how they freak goaltenders out. 
There's a reason I don't think either of us ever had a career as a goal goalie coming up. That, that and the uh, high-speed sure. projectiles, but I, they and me don't mix. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on the ice, Crozier flips it over to an open wing. And Cauley will just manage to get it out. And a few times this period, the Clippers have gained the zone without icing the puck, which, uh, talk about microcosms. There's another one. Gerard now. All by himself, fans on it. One-timer follow-up from Williams goes wide. Rappler, hit <laughs> by Lynn. And they are still uh, exchanging addresses there at the blue line. That one off the glove snap shot there from Evans. Berman able to get a glove on it. Still not cleared, all alone in front and stuffed. Williams, Williams v. Berman. Berman comes out on top. Williams all alone. Didn't have a lot of time, took his chance. Berman equal to it. And now, Pickers trying to have some sustained time in the attacking zone, and they're not getting it. Now this is Evans breaking out for the Kings. Turnbull's waiting out there, takes the shot himself, blocked and sent back to the point, and it's clear this is a chance here. Click the head, this will be a breakaway. Great save, Adamic. Back to the point, clear, dangerous second ever there, and now right back the other way, it'll be the Kings. Turnbull. Well, it's a subtle grab by Miller Agney, but they had to call it. Took away a breakaway. Crowd doesn't like it. Back to back, half breakaways, let's call them. Though let's give a, a shout out for the second ever. The diving poke to spring his men as Miller Agni will take a seat for two minutes. Well, I, I don't know if he would have won that foot race, but you know, he grabs on and, and, and kind of hangs on and gets called for it. And I mean, that's one that the referees are, are they have to call that. And Powell River. We've got a great game, great road game. Chance to get that two goal lead. All the way down to Thomas. Cycles. Kawamura and Thomas cycling here in far boards from our broadcast booth. Kimball out here as well, Volpe. Buono. Volpe thinks about it. Buono. Down low. High and over Berman's net. Well, they'll try again, bouncing puck. Trying to settle it there. Not able to, but it does go deep where Kimball is waiting. Skips one check. Loose puck. Bad away. Can't get it. To stay in, Volpe will recover. Last ditch defending there for the Clippers. They just managed to keep their noses clean. Only long enough for it to be hammered back down the ice by Van Robois. Buono now. Waits, sets up the power play. Got about 50 seconds left here. Evans, the dish, and just to break the blue line, back to Evans, looking far post. Couldn't get the shot off to Berard. He'll get a second chance here as he goes low to Turnbull. Back to point, Stevens. Berard, but centrally, back it goes, thinking about shooting there. It's Evans, and it eventually does fall to Berman. Well, that was a great, great puck movement by Powell River. And here's that turnover, and almost another tap in by Williams. There were two Clippers outside of the zone when the puck was turned over, and that's part of the reason there's so much room for Powell River in the offensive zone. There's early exits out of the zone right now for the Clippers, and it's causing a lot of problems, especially when they have a turnover like that one. Babbitt, you saw in the replay there being stuffed by Adonic. One of perhaps the only good chance the Clippers have had all period. Was a good one, but Adonic even better. Now deep in the Clippers zone. Crozier will try and do something with this. He will chip it out. And Cauley will clear the zone. Cecilia's with him and picks up the puck. 
to try to center past Dominic waiting at the uh, post there was Dermenjian. Arnelli goes low, saved by Adamic. Through traffic, right idea. Stevens now. Can he clear for the King? With a little bit of help from Buono, he will. Only as far as Marinelli, though. He sends it right back down. And racing in is Torzak. Torzak and Dermenjian. Two Clippers against three Kings. I think they're looking for it there. Gets past him, Dermenjian. Good shifter, he's had limited minutes, but he's uh, doing well with them now as Torzak comes over to help. Finlayer, Stevens, and Buono down low. Not a bad little fourth line shift there for the Clippers. And the Kings will clear. Only as far as, that was very nearly Brodziak going in alone, but instead, it's a great shot there from Kimball off the blocker, Berman. Mazer now, pinned in deep by Raffler. Breaking out the other way, Schmunk looks wide. This is Man Finlater, tried to go center. Centering the puck, nobody home. Shot not troubling Berman, goes wide. Goblins now. Let's get some help. He goes deep. Berard is waiting. Centers. Waiting at the post there was Goblins. Popped away from him. They'll try again. They go back to the point. Raffler. And will deflect up into the netting. Will Raffler's shot for a faceoff? A little under. Four minutes to go, 3.43 to be exact in the second period. Val River Kings three, and the Nanaimo Clippers two. Right now, it is looking like the, the scoreboard does not lie here, Kyle. It's been more or less Kings this period, and they have been making the Clippers look very disorganized whenever they break in. The Clippers have five shots in this period. Powell River, 15 already, so. You know, nine shots first period, five shots second period, that's not good enough. And they really need something to change momentum at this they, point. They do get a steal there. Van Robo is trying to beat Adam at Kent. From the point it goes, Pat Pass not finding anybody from Bourne. They've got to be careful here because trying to split the D is Barrar, but it will be an icing call against the Kings. Well, I mean, some of those guys have been out for a long shift, so we'll see. But face off in the offensive zone right now, Nanaimo, that's key. And you touched on it early in the first period, how Powell River was really doing well in the face off circle all over the ice. I, I, I would say that trend has continued through, you know, almost 40 minutes of this game. Crows, you're thrown out, face off against Samantha. Brodziak will come in. The stern talking to from the linesman. While he was able to win the draw, it is Stevens coming away with it. Williams, excuse me. He gains the zone, but it's right back out from the Clippers. Looking for Babbage there, but it rolls past him. Adamic forced to play it. Only as far as the Clippers blue line, though, and they will set up. Right up the middle. Trying to skip his check there was Moragni. And you get it as Babbage goes behind the net to receive this dump in. Centers! Saved by Adamic. Crozier had a great look at net there. Really something from nothing, but couldn't get it past Adamic. And now Crozier will try again. Why right, this is Lynn. Lynn goes behind the net. Nothing but kings around him. He leaves it. And the net it goes. Cilia, back to the point. Win again. This time it's picked up by Stevens, and they will go off the glass and out. But not far enough. Crozier all tied up here, but does just enough to kick that puck back over the line. Offside called against the Kings. Incidental interference there. The puck's in the skates, and it's fished out. And we're going to get a look at this opportunity now. This Nanaimo opportunity. They swing it around the boards. Babbage finds his man right out in front, Crozier, and Adamic is a positional goaltender, and he's in the right spot there. That one didn't get through him. 
set perfectly, right in the butterfly, stick in front of him, nowhere to go. Acting on instinct there, and it served him well. Center ice now, here comes Cauley. Cauley trying to break through, can't. Stuffed up there by the Powell River line. They'll try again, Cauley. Takes himself, looks far post, didn't miss by much. But it will ring all the way around and back into the Clipper zone. Crozier forced to retreat. Split, <laughs> put that right underneath Turnbull. Dangerous pass. Like you've been saying, Kyle, those stretch passes, bread and butter here for the Clippers. Now they go central, trying a little tic-tac-toe play. Losing the handle with Celia as he had a glorious chance to pot one to even the score before the period's out. Instead, it's four kings back the other way. But that's not clear, and now this is Babich. Chance to go two on one here, he's got to hurry. Streaking his closer, goes back to Coley. Back of the net for Coley! Uh, well, a little bit of river hockey both ways. Lots of open ice, Coley's had a couple opportunities, and that time he just didn't miss it. Knew exactly what he wanted to do, go high on a Adamic. He's very good at taking the low part of the ice away, and that's a perfect shot by Coley. Finally, the breakout works here. They have they abandon the stretch pass and they go for a little tic-tac-toe on the fast break. Babich draws all the attention. Cauley wires this, pops the bottle. Thank you very much. Well, I think Crozier was the decoy on that one. And beautiful shot, though. Parker Cauley, that should be his 13th goal of the season. And it is a big one here as it ties the score at three as we enter the final minute of the second period. Wari picking up the second assist on that, the defender. So it's Kali from Babich and Wari to even the score at three. Kings now back on the attack, looking to regain that one goal lead. Bit scrambly here from the Clippers. This is Berard, puts it central, and that is just chopped away. The Kings will treat, maybe time for one more attack if they can set this up. Just some soft hands here on defense. And right through the middle goes Stevens. Stevens one on four. Why not, five seconds to go in the period. That should do it. Cleared out to the blue line, and that is the second period. We finished tied at three, thanks to Parker Cauley. Second period started with Babich on the power play, and Obsuth giving Powell River a tie game, and then the lead, Cauley evening it up, and that's where we stand after 40 minutes. 3-3 here at Frank Green Arena, between the Nanaimo Clippers and the Powell River Kings. You're watching Island Rivals Hockey here on Shaw TV. Second period intermission coming up. Man of the hour, Chad is down on the ice level. Take it away, Chad Brennan. Well, thank you very much, Kyle and Retiro. Great call up there in the booth. Wow, what an exciting one. This has turned out to be three all the score. Late, min or late minute goal there again, Parker Call. Cowley, it's the way it's kind of been. Uh, it's been all the beginning and the end of the periods here. Lots of action, uh, shots on goal. Powell River 26, Nanaimo 17. Boy, what a busy one. Uh, you know, coming up later in our first intermission, pretty, in our second intermission, pretty excited to be able to have a, a conversation with Bob Foglietta, assistant coach of the Nanaimo Clippers. But first, an exciting uh, little, little segment we've done for you here. Uh, Matt Carter had an opportunity to look at the new VIU hockey program that started up this season. So let's uh, have a little look at VIU Mariners hockey. Pretty odd neck protector. Hey everyone, my name is Matt Carter. Welcome to Matt About Town. I'm about here to tell you about a brand new hockey team in town, the VIU Mariners, a club team through Vancouver Island University. Now usually I'm actually down at the rink for the games uh, playing the organ, DJing some music, but the truth of the matter is I've always wanted to be a goalie. So let's uh, strap on the pads and see what the team is all about. The 
Describe the level of play here in the BCIHL. I'd say it's very comparable to a lot of the junior that uh, they have in town, whether it be the box or the Clippers. People are a lot more stronger and more uh, patient and mindset is a lot better out here. Classic hockey IQ is really uh, strong. Yeah, the hockey IQ is stronger and boys are men out here. We got some Junior A guys, got some Junior B guys, got a few dub guys sprinkled in, but it's good level hockey. It's a high tempo, hard hitting. It's fun hockey to watch. I mean, guys are out there, there's fights, there's a lot of goals, there's tic-tac-toe plays. I mean, it's got it all. What does it mean to you to be able to get an education and play competitive hockey at the same time? Oh, best thing ever. I love it. I love the sport, love playing hockey, and just being able to get my education at the same time, dream come true. I didn't think I was going to be still playing hockey after my 20-year-old uh, year in junior, and uh, I ended up getting an opportunity in Selkirk and then coming back to the island, which is pretty damn close to home, which is, and it's just been a dream. It's been an absolute blast. It means almost everything. I've always wanted to go to post-secondary schooling here, and to be able to play the game I love while getting an education is nothing but awesome. How do you balance playing competitive hockey and your studies? Uh, time management, yeah, it's a grind, but... We practice every day at 7 a.m. to 6.30 a.m., so it's kind of nice to get practice out of the way in the morning, and the rest of the day is just basically studying. A lot of the guys here are in similar programs, so I know a lot of the guys will uh, do homework together or study in the libraries. There's a couple study groups that will head up to the library every once in a while and get that done, but uh, it definitely takes some work when you're a first-year first student balancing the, uh, the workload with the hockey. All right, no, I'm gonna take some shots here in a little bit. I can barely skate, I've never played goal before. Uh, what chance do I have? Uh, out here, I don't know, these guys got some good shots, but I think if you just stay in there and don't try and give anything away, you should, you should be able to do all right. Stay in front of the middle of that, you know? <laughs> play the angles. Yeah, play the angles. Make sure you know where your posts are, I guess. I'm not sure. <laughs> flop around, be like Hashik. <laughs> I've been told to uh, watch the posts, flop around, and stand up, so really it's kind of mixed messages. I'd watch some guys shoot for your head, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Well, my save percentage might not be too good, but if you want to see the VIU Mariners take shots against some real goalies in the uh, BCIHL, uh, check out the uh, VIU Mariners men's hockey website. Get the full schedule on there. Uh, all sorts of great games generally happening Saturday right here at the Nanaimo Ice Center. Uh, games going all the way into February and March, so we'd love to see you out there supporting VIU hockey. From out about town, my name is Matt Carter. See you on the ice! The 2018 Bel Air Direct BC Men's Curling Championship, January 31st to February 4th at the Parksville Curling Club. Teams from across the province will compete to represent BC at the National Championship. The final four games will air live on BC Shaw TV stations and stream online for viewers across the country. The 2018 Bel Air Direct BC Men's Curling Championship, only on Shaw TV. This is my very first costume. I made it for my very first convention. I realized that, uh, oh gosh, I was like definitely shoved down that rabbit hole. <laughs> really, really fast and hard. I'm Julie Townsend and I make cosplay. <laughs> I've been cosplaying for about 11 years. Started off small, and this is it. Then I got bigger and bigger, and then I wanted to make a, a new costume for every day of the convention, so I was making three costumes for the weekend, maybe more. Most challenging is this one. It was armor. It's definitely an art form. Uh, definitely an expression of who you are. There's always that new shiny new character that you want to see if you can make the costume from. It definitely goes down that rabbit hole hard and fast. Um, uh, and I, I don't really want to um, go back because it's too much fun. So much to do. <laughs> Rivals. Noun. A person or thing competing with another for the same objective or for superiority in the same field of activity. The BCHL is back live on Shaw TV. Things will heat up on the ice as Island Rivals face off against one another up and down and all around Vancouver Island. Five teams are all fighting one another to claim the status of Island champs. Tune in for our monthly Island matchup, only on Shaw TV. Well, well, well. Welcome back.
back to BCHL Live on Shaw TV. Uh, Parker Colley's late minute goal, making it three all. Exciting time. We're here with uh, assistant coach from the Nanaimo Clippers, Bob Follietta. Uh, welcome, Bob. Thank you very much. Yeah. You played your uh, minor hockey here, right here in Nanaimo. Tell us what's it like uh, coaching the hometown team. Oh, it's exciting. I never thought I'd get the opportunity to do this. You know, I'm 50 years old and I coached minor hockey all along. And uh, the opportunity came when Darren became the GM and coach, and I, I jumped at it. I thought this would be a fun opportunity for me. So you've worked with uh, Darren Naylor in the past in the WHL. Tell us a little bit about your, your previous time you worked together. Yeah, well, we played hockey together in Victoria, and uh, I was a 20-year-old, a seasoned vet, and been traded around a few times, and uh, he was a young buck, but uh, I showed him the ropes and how to play the game down there. Are you guys on the same line? Like, who was the sniper, who was the playmaker? Oh, uh, he would have to pass the puck to me, and I uh, lead the way with the goal scoring. But he was a good two-way player, and I was more of a one-way player. Well, no, and, and our, our director, Todd Jones, plays a little goaltender in senior men's. I think the term he used when I he saw you coming down is you could score at will, something like he felt like he was the guy in the Matrix moving real slow as, like, pucks were going by him. Yeah, I s scored a few goals on Todd, but he actually stopped me more than enough times but uh, those were the days when I could score now I'm just happy to be standing on my skates. Well great well hey tell us a little bit about your role with the team and the coaching uh, team there and uh, how does any of the previous stuff from the WHL does that translate here in your coaching role? Well I mean my role on the team here is to I'm, run the defense and then I help out a lot with the power play stuff I mean I want kids to be creative Nowadays, hockey is so much of a system that we just, you know, creativity is gone. And we, I preach creativity. I mean, I don't go to certain spots and I go to the net and try and score goals. And that's what I want these kids to have the freedom to do it with de defense in mind. You know, we can't leave our own zone all the time. But, uh, you know, we got to be able to score goals and make it interesting for the fans to watch. That's great. Well, six weeks left in the season. It's getting down to the crunch time. Uh, what are you What are you guys going to focus on here over the last uh, you know six weeks? Just preaching our system. Like we want them to be feel free with offense and not be bottled down. Just you know sitting back and ch ch choking up the neutral zone. If you can play offense with defense, you can win games. And we got the goaltending to do it. You know, and, and your goaltender has been amazing today. Special teams have been amazing for you as well. You got one for two on the power play, and then, of course, the penalty kill is keeping you in it. What do you want to do here in the final 20? Well, we got to get pucks deep, and we got to actually, you know, dictate the play. You know, we're, you know they were pushing us because we took a few penalties. But uh, if we can get back on our horse and, you know, put the play in their end and then pound their defense, then we can, uh, we'll turn it around. All right, well, thank you very much. That's uh, Bob Follietta with us here, assistant coach from the Nanaimo Clippers. Good luck in the third. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's great. So uh, three all here is the story uh, for uh, Powell River versus the Nanaimo Clippers. Big shots on goal, 26-17. You heard uh, the assistant coach. they got to get the pucks deep and uh, see if we can uh, see if the Nanaimo Clippers can come out on top. And next up, we have another locker room flashback, and uh, we're going to be having a look at that uh, very shortly. Stay tuned. The 2018 Bell Air Direct BC Men's Curling Championship, January 31st to February 4th at the Parksville Curling Club. Teams from across the province will compete to represent BC at the National Championship. The final four games will air live on BC Shaw TV stations and stream online for viewers across the country. The 2018 Bel Air Direct BC Men's Curling Championship, only on Shaw TV. Cruising down the island highway, I got nowhere to be. Is it one? Is it nine? Is it quarter to three? Understand I'm in no hurry, it's just not how I am. Gonna get my yoga on at the Colliery Dam. You see, I eat real slowly at a leisurely pace. Get my hair styled nice so that it's not in my face. But what I really want to tell you is don't, don't make me hurry up. up. Gonna sit and watch the waves while I sip from my cup. Got all day to work on my rhymes. Be prepared, it can rain or snow anytime. Doesn't stress me out to be standing in line. Chilling by 
the beach and I'm sure feeling fine. I got Mondays for snowmen, I got Tuesdays for runs, and all the rest of the days I eat cinnamon buns. Yes, the island is amazing and I wish you were here, and you're never more than two minutes away from a deer. So please join me in relaxing while he tattoos my arm, and where else in the world is there a unicorn farm? You know, I'm never in a rush as you can see from this graphic, and I don't even get mad when I get stuck in traffic. Wait a minute. There's no traffic on the island. <laughs> traffic? What's traffic? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that, it's a mime. Gotta walk a lot of steps going one at a time. Oh no, I forgot my next line. Don't just stand there, throw me a lime. My name's Lucy, and I'm 93 years old. My hobbies are baking, reading, and now jumping out of an airplane. Hi, my name's Judy. I'm 65 years old, and I love skydiving. Skydiving has always been on my bucket list, and Judy came along and she said she's doing it. I said, well, let's do it together. This lady's crazy lady. She just loves excitement. I hear you're quite the daredevil. <laughs> awesome. I don't scare easy. Not before, not during, not after. And it was something I wanted to do, so what's the use of being scared? The sensation coming out, you feel like you're free, you're flying. It's fabulous. I never wanted to land. I just wanted to fly up there with the birds. It could become addictive for me. I'm going to do it again and again and again. <laughs> if you just sit there, then you feel of your little aches and pains. It gets worse. Go out and enjoy yourself and do something you like. <laughs> Rivals, noun, a person or thing competing with another for the same objective or for superiority in the same field of activity. The BCHL is back live on Shaw TV. Things will heat up on the ice as island rivals face off against one another up and down and all around Vancouver Island. Five teams are all fighting one another to claim the status of island champs. Tune in for our monthly island matchup only on Shaw TV. Hello everyone and welcome back to BCHL Live on Shaw TV. It's a three all tie and it's anybody's game heading into the final period and special teams have really been uh, the uh, issue for Nanaimo. One for two on the power play and of course that last minute goal by Parker Cowley tying things up. We're gonna head up to the booth for the call and for the highlights. Take it away again for the third guys, Kyle and Rituro. Thank you very much, Chad. Kyle, by the eye test, that last 20 minutes looked like all Powell River. They were dominant. They were forcing a lot of sloppy turnovers. Yet if we go by the scoreboard, the Clippers have scored twice since a tie game, three all. They got a power play goal and an even strength goal that period to go along with their shorthanded goal in the first period. And special teams is so important. 15 to five, I think the shots were for Powell River in that period. And they dominated, but we're three all going to the third. And here's this pass and Babich stuffs that in looks like he got it the first time but he whacked that at a second time to make sure and he got credit for it we were not sure if it was going to be Marinelli or Babich but Babich gets credit for it, his eighth of the year and that tied things up and then it was Powell River look at all the room in the slot Obsuth follows up his own shot gets his rebound and makes it three to two for Powell River at that point can't really fault the goalie on that one, not his fault at all. And then here's Nanaimo on this beautiful three on two, executed to perfection and finished off with a beautiful shot to the top drawer for Parker Cawley. Three all going to the third period. These teams have had their last, two of their last three go, three games have been decided by one goal and it looks like we're maybe gonna have that same movie here tonight. That's Parker Cawley's seventh point in the last five games. Uh, you meant, we heard Chad mention him in the opening 
that he was going to be a key player for Nanaimo, and he certainly made his mark here. Now we see some of the work that the goalies were managing to do. Berman there, stuffing in close, and here, Adamic at the other end. Babich absolutely robbed, nowhere to go. Just a big goaltender, and, you know, he comes across, makes himself look big, and, and then Babich, probably if he had to do it over again, he probably would have just fired it on. And there's a great chance by uh, Tristan Crozier, and a beautiful save by Adamic. I mean, this is why he's one of the best goalies in the VCHL. He's good laterally, he takes away the bottom of the net, and positionally on that one, he was perfect. He'll need to be big for the final 20. Tied at three at Frank Green Arena, and the Nanaimo Clippers and the Powell River Kings. The Nanaimo winning the opening faceoff in the third period, but losing possession, and right back the other way come the Kings. Up Suth, saved by Berman. And Berman trying to stub there. It is on the back of the net. The ref has noticed, and play stops. So just like that, Powell River going to the same mantra that we saw in the second period there, Kyle, speed kills. Speed kills, and I think in the third period, turnovers are going to kill too, because we saw Nanaimo's first goal was a turnover, and you gotta be you got to be sharp with the puck in your own zone, coming out of the neutral zone, and there's nothing wrong with chipping it off the glass and getting it out. Big body there behind the net. I think that was Turnbull. Now coming up the other way for the Clippers is Brodziak. Puts it in front, nobody there. All by himself, more or less. But he will end up inadvertently getting a face-off out of it as the puck is slipped over the boards out of play. Well, the bench is a dangerous place to spend your time. Juano almost got a puck in the face, but... Uh, Here's that big hit right out the face-off. It is Turnbull. Not the biggest guy out there, but still laying the body out. Well, that's just a, a good job of being strong and throwing his man to the ice. False start there. They'll do it again. Kali phasing off against Szymanski. Will be the Kings winning it. Buono looking for an outlet. Only as far as the line. Right back in come the Clippers. Big hit in the, behind the play there. Going end over was Celia. He looks so great. He was wincing a bit as he got up. It looks to be no worse for wear. Still moving. Meanwhile, also down behind the play will be Crozier. Meanwhile, kept in at the line there. Smart hands there from Burrard. Keeps it in centrally. Not able to complete the pass. There was Stevens. Or Williams, excuse me. Now this is Lynn looking far off the boards. Can't find his man, but following up the play is Celia. Collie down low, couldn't find his man. And it will clear the zone. Marinelli will get it, set up. Leaves it. Celia tries to go deep, can't. And there to pick it up will be Volpe. Flipped up and over and out, clears the zone. Babbage now. Met by two Kings, can't get very far. Clippers will try again. Up the other wing, off the boards, just pushed in there by Torzok. Following up is Crozier there. Big hit in the boards there, right in the corner. Kept in, smart stick there. By Brodziak, behind the net it goes. Only Kings there, though they flip it out, nearly intercepting. Babbage. Now this is a king steal, nice little move, drop pass. Doesn't pull the trigger yet, now he thinks about it. Great save by Berman. Koblenz given the angle there, nothing further. And they will call that play down. Knocked down with a high stick and, and maybe that's a good thing because things were kind of coming unraveled there. They were and the physicality is ramping up as well. Big hit, oh he blew, <laughs> purely uh, unintentional, blows a tire there, takes out his man regardless. And then Buono throwing down, I think that's Crozier behind the play. And of course, the other Crozier, of course there are two, the brothers, Tristan and Maxwell. Maxwell getting in on the action there as well. A little bit of spice to this third period. Always good to see. Well, there's no secret how big this game is, and I'm so a little surprised it's taken this long for the animosity to get going. There's another steal off the post! Ringing iron was Findlater. You hear that one echoing off the rafters. 
Goalie's best friend is Bailing Berman out there. A spin later nearly gives the Kings the go-ahead goal. 17 minutes, the three-minute mark, excuse me. Colburn's now right up the middle. Dishes out wide. Tipped over. Colburn's trying to get the return there. Couldn't find it. Schmunk getting a few more minutes here as the Kings continue to juggle their lines. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Kings only with 12, or excuse me, only with 11 forwards dressed tonight. So there has been quite a lot of rotation as Schmunk and Thomas are moved in and out of the top three lines. Meanwhile, behind the play, we do have a player down that appears to be, to be uh, Evans, I believe. That looks like it's Evans. He's kind of bent over. I'm not sure what happened on that one. And we got this highlight here, and look at it. This is not, you, you can't have this in a tie game in the third period. Both teams got to make sure, get the puck out of your zone if you do nothing else, but trying to skate it past the guy and then losing it, giving him a clean lane to the net. That's not a recipe for success at this point. You can't hope that he's, you can't hope that your goalie's going to bail you out every time, and you can't hope players like Findlet are going to hit the iron every time they do that, because they won't. Well, and it's a matter of where you hit it, too. Mm -hmm. That was flush. That, that hit it straight on and bounced right out. I mean, he hits the inside of the post. That thing rolls in. So a lucky break for Nanaimo to still be tied in this game. Finn later, he was one of our players to watch early in this, this game. And I, he's probably looking to the rafters about that opportunity. Great opportunity. Had Berman beat clean and just couldn't beat the post. Matter of centimeters, keeping this a tie game. Meanwhile, after all that debate, it turns out there's a double minor being assessed here against the Clippers. And it will be Van Robois sitting for four. Well, this is a huge, huge moment in the game. To state the obvious, Powell River has not scored on a power play, but they're gonna have a long time to work with it now. Kimball breaks in. Not very well, though, right back the other way. Cilia trying to get out. Met with nothing but white jerseys. Good stand up the line, though. Solid presence by Crozier, stopping the attempted ingress from Kimball. And they will clear the puck. Paul Spear on. Yeah, that's why Evans was sort of punched over. He got speared right in the gut, it looked like. Volpe now. Manning the point of this one timer through his screen. Jumping there with Samansky, trying to provide a tip, but Berman was not phased, and he makes the save. Berman comes to Nanaimo. Their penalty kill was terrible to start the year. He comes, he kind of solidifies everything. Their penalty kill has been a lot better since probably about November on. And boy, this is a key point in the game. Evans, behind the back. Turnbull, got a man in front. A cross crease option available as well. Ops go back to the point to Evans. Turnbull takes himself, cuts inside, shoots himself. But snapping the glove there was Berman. Little flash of leather and the puck stays out. Well, on the ice right now, you see Evans and you see... Turnbull's there as well. Turnbull. I mean, this, is, this is why you don't want to take penalties against Powell River. Their, their firepower offensively that they can throw out there is really good. Put them in with anybody in the league in terms of the firepower offensively. Berard now out here as part of this unit. They got plenty of time to work. Evans now looking for Berard. Samansky leaves his post in front of the net. Back to Berard. Turnbull sneaks in. Not doesn't go there as he goes back to the point. Looking low, there's Samansky. Tries to pank that in. Unintentionally was looking in front for Turnbull. It ends up going straight to Milleragni. This is Evans from the point, down low, one-timer, bouncing puck! And that is indeed in. There's some debate here, but was that batted in with a high stick? Clippers are arguing it. Doesn't look like the referee's interested, and it will stand. Power play goal for the Powell River Kings, 4-3. Well, we'll get a look at this. I think this is a good goal, though. I think he batted it out of the air, but I think the stick was under the crossbar. The referees are conferring just below us here. Evans goes out wide. There's Samansky, and he bats it. Yes, that's definitely down about the level of his knee, I would say. It looked like he batted it back to himself and then knocked it in. This is for sure going to count. Oh, there. He, yeah, he brings it down to control it and then hits it again. 
great hand high there from Samansky to control it after a little double tap. Neil Samansky with what should be his sixth goal of the season. But one more angle, take another look at this. Yeah, we're gonna get this now. And he, he knocks it out of the air to himself. Right and then there. he bats it in. So there's there it's definitely above. There's the hit below the bar, back to himself, and then he's definitely down around his thigh, I would say, when he or shins when he hits it the second time. Not much debate about it at all. A power play goal and great hand eye, and that's why you can't put Powell River on the power play. They have so much firepower. Samansky's not one of the, the big gunners on this power play, but got it done there. And more to the point, because it was a double minor for Spearing, it's still a power play for the Kings, and back to work they go. Low shot on Berman, it's loose, he hasn't controlled it. Whistle had already gone, just as the puck popped free. Catching a break there is Berman, as lurking right outside the net was Williams. That is a break for Nanaimo, and I said how Samansky wasn't one of the big gunners on the power play, but he has six goals this year, four of them are on the power play. So he's a specialist. Absolutely. So here we can see it again. Just as the whistle goes there, it pops free. Just a split second too late there. Williams to pot his, what would be the, the insurance marker at this point. And with authority, it is slapped down the ice by Babich. And the Clippers now have 90 seconds to staunch the bleeding here. Only down by one, but they are still killing off the double minor to Van Robois. That's a big kill. Yes, you've given up the lead, but you keep this to one goal. You know, the way this game has been going, plenty of time to come back. Van Robois was spearing on Evans. To got them into this, and they get themselves out of it, having only given up one. It's Volpe now. Has a little bit of room, takes the shot high, the deflection, just flipped wide, and then slapped back down the ice with authority by Crozier. That was dangerous. Great stretch pass from Adamic. Finds Turnbull on the change. Push to the outside. Back to the point for Volpe. Evans winds up one timer. High. Turnbull being watched. Takes it low. Short pass. Gerard thinks. Goes low. Tried to find Samansky for the tip there. High degree of difficulty on that pass. And ultimately, if we get it to the line but not out, kept in. Across it's Gerard. Blocked. Cauley will just flip that off the glass and down. 10 seconds left. Adamuk's going to try another stretch pass here, and he will. Finds Turnbull again. They might not be able to get a shot here, although maybe they have no time for one. Stevens can't get through the wall of black jerseys, and that will do it for the double niner. Vanderboy is back on. He immediately goes off to the bench to change. Kings now. Over group. All in all, you get your goal on a double minor, mission accomplished, but look out! Oh, very nearly equalized right there by the Clippers. That close by Crozier. Maxwell, Cro or Tristan Crozier, excuse me. Nearly managing to get the job done. Well, that's just a great shot. And we talked about how when you hit the post, it can go well or it can go bad. That one hit flush again, right out. Davich with a little steal, and he had time. Oh, did he ever. Took his time, picked his spot. Once again, matter of centimeters. And it's still 4-3 Powell River. Dumped in by the Kings. Off the net. Bean. Going to get it out to center ice, but not much further. It's Brozniak. Around the neck was Crozier. Leaves it for Babich. Babich not much from Brooklyn, finds Crozier at the point. Let's it go, deflected but wide. And cleared from the front of the net by Schmunk. Back to point, it goes again. Crozier, wide. Babich comes together with Tristan Crozier. Maxwell back at the point here. This is Maxwell. Put it across to his partner. Arnelli puts it towards the net, and it is absorbed by Adamic. We talked about how turnovers were going to be an issue in this in this period. And you look at those turnovers, they have led to a post. They've led to a couple goals in this game. So, I mean, both teams have got to clean it up. 
especially in the neutral zone, especially coming out of their own zone. There's been too many turnovers in the third period. They've led to scoring chances. They've led to goals. You know, I think whoever keeps it cleaner might get out of here with two points. I would tend to agree with that. That shot just missing the net and banking off the board. Scramble for it in front. Mitchell finds the stick of Williams, and he will not get it out, though it's weakly chopped back in from the point. Gervais will retreat, but he has it now. Gervais over the center line is dumped, still gets it in, no icing. And a little body laid out there by Lynn. Then stays in front, goes to Cauley. Now it's Lynn. Can't control it, though. And he obliges a little bit of body. Well, that was a glorified glove pass. He, he jumped at it, got it, knocked it into the zone, Williams. And that looks like one of those, looks like a tip-off in basketball. The two guys jumping for the, the ball. Well, he jumps for the puck and he sends everybody outside. But pretty good, pretty good lateral on that one. Pretty good vertical, pardon me, on that one. And yeah, he, all he gets for his trouble is a face-off outside the zone. Seems to be some confusion on the face-off here. Uh, the change not quite complete for the Clippers. In fact, some of them were pointing at the bench and not moving as the puck was dropped, so they will do that again. Torzok up to take it. And he will win it back cleanly. Melaragan. Melaragni, excuse me. Dumps it in. And Dermengian chases it down with Torzok there. Goes to the center. Losing the handle there. Zermengian. And this is lovely pass for, oh, and he just goes wide, does Absuth. Lovely pass, and now back we go. Three on two shaping up here for the Clippers. And that cross crease pass just a little bit in too tight for Melaragni. He's already passed, had to contort quite a bit to get it. Now Absuth will get another go at it, but it is deflected off of Van Roboys and wide. Back to the point, Volpe sizes it up, waits for the block, and then it goes. Play it, says the ref. Puck was in a, just up against the net there. They take it over, and out they go. Putting it in deep and chasing now, and Roboys lays the body out. But that's easily picked up by Pouliot. And they do manage to get it out, but only as far as center. Galau thought he was offside, and indeed he was. He hesitated, wasn't quite sure about it. A little bit of miscommunication perhaps with the lines, but regardless, it is blown and we hit the third period timeout. Power River Kings four, the Nanaimo Clippers three. Power play goal by Szymanski on a four minute spearing major to Van Roboys. And let's take a look at how we got here, Kyle. Well, here, here's, the, here's the big play by Turnbull just knocking his man down and then there's this roller <laughs> derby in the in the, the blue line area and then whoop, uh, Max Crozier finds his way into the net with a little help. Crozier, the older one, bumps his man down and there's this bad turnover by Van Roboys and off the post right it goes. off the iron. Oh, not but like you said earlier, just a fraction of an angle. And then this one, short side high off the post. Tristan Crozier very nearly putting Nanaimo back on even footing, but it remains a 4-3 game. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if Nanaimo continues to send that, that guy deep right around the offensive blue line, road hockey, you call it a cherry picker, we'll call it a rover, but <laughs> they, they send a guy deep, they're trying to get that stretch pass, and you know, it's worked for them a little bit tonight, but it's kind of like it's kind of like a home run pass in football. You're going to get a couple of them, maybe, but you're not. It's not a consistent play. But uh, they're going to probably keep trying it because it has really opened up the ice for them. You only throw so many hail marys, like you said there, Kyle. And now it's the Clippers trying to do something, but just sending it to an open wing. Nobody there. Oliver will gladly hammer that in. Grabbed now by Babich. As some help, offs go up the wing himself, waits, dumps it in off the backboards. Back at the point, Marinelli goes through some skates. Shuts so a face off circle, losing his stick there. I think that was 
Is that a Rather? Regardless, he's got it back now. And it's Clippers in deep. And that shot will deflect off of a stick and out for a faceoff in the Powell River zone. Earlier in this period, we saw Tristan Crozier just flip one toward the net on a bad angle. We heard the coach talk about creativity and how that is encouraged on the Clippers since the coaching change. And I mean, that's just a creative play, and you never know. Maybe you get lucky and it goes in, but if you don't try that from time to time, you won't be rewarded for it. Stevens now starting to break up behind the net, gets it forward. This is Schmunk now. Stop. Almost manages to win it back. High pressure here from the Kings. They can afford to. Ultimately, they go nowhere themselves. They do stop the Vancouver attack and fit later. Tries to break things out. Can't get far. Celia loses it. Back it goes. Finlater threw an interesting looking shot at net. Now a little bit of scuffling as it, Berman was bumped in the process there. That uh, necessitates a response from the Clippers. A little bit of pushing and shoving. Nothing much more out of that. Well, we talk about creativity at one end, creativity at the other end. You just float one toward the net. Maybe your guy gets a stick on it. You get this game to five to three, but and I say nothing came of it, but it looks like there will be offsetting miners here. Drinks him in the near corner. Well, Finn later, just look at this. He just throws it at the net. He was hoping for a deflection, didn't come. But again, those are design plays that you're going to try, and you will get rewarded for them if you keep trying them. Koblenz and Wari will be getting the miners for roughing here. And if. Uh, if you're the Kings, you've just pulled off one of the top D-men for the Clippers for two minutes, which is not a bad trade for a third liner like Koblenz. We'll take that trade off, that's for sure, especially with a one goal lead. And the game continues. The Clippers trying to do something here with the puck deep in the Kings zone. Williams manages to get it out. Berard now tries to get past Fiend. They're getting a shot out of it. They will draw a penalty here. Hit with a high stick. It was an actual high sticking. And it looks like Berard maybe ushered to the penalty box here. Did, he did get his stick high on that fall through. The referee must have saw a clip there. And on the offensive rush, Berard taking two minutes there for high sticking. Well, this is this is where Nanaimo really misses Jake Harris. He's got 10 power play goals, and he's a scratch tonight. And they do have other guys. I mean, you look at Tristan Crozier. He's got six power play goals. You go down the lineup, and Babich, Babich has four power play goals. So here we go. And there it is right there. Oh, he got, him in the, up. He yep. got him in the head. Yeah, you got to call that. It's just an incidental thing. There's nothing malicious there, but that is a penalty you have to call. Yep. And now Nanaimo, they've, they've been riding their power play most of this season. they got a great opportunity to pull even as time is starting to become a factor. Cal Babich, uh, five power play goals now with his tally tonight. Brosiak with four. Tristan Crozier with six. These are all the guys you talked about, Kyle, who no doubt the Clippers will be looking to on this power play. Bourne is out on the ice right now with Babich and Crozier. Tristan Crozier is there, as is Babich. And they win the draw. Back to the point it goes, but sloppily, and they will lose the zone here. Melaragni, of course, to go back with Marinelli. High it goes off the glass, charging in is Bourne. He will get there. Crozier, Marinelli. Crozier takes over at the point, they switch. Still Crozier now. Goes low, looks for the deflection, gets it from Bourne. Not much on it. And Dom easily sees that aside. And the Kings will clear it to center ice. Only that far though, right back in comes Marinelli. The Kings do manage to sneak a change on there, jumping onto the ice with Samansky. Fresh legs for the Power River defenders. Crozier goes low. Babich loses it on the cycle. And Volpe there to help clear it out. And they do manage to get it past the point, pinching in there was Melaragni. 
He is beaten, whips it back quickly up ice. This is Babich and Bourne crossing the blue line, still Babich. Babich goes to the faceoff circle, back to the point. Crozier on now, Maxwell Crozier. Shoots it low, nice wrist shot on target, saved by Adamic. Hit him right in the P, right in the crown, and he's gonna stop that one all day long. 42 seconds left in the power play. Hasn't lacked for effort, though credible chances are somewhat lacking here, Kyle. Looks good, but just doesn't produce anything. Powell Rivers kept everything to the outside on this penalty kill. That's exactly how you want it. Towards up of a scramble draw there, ends up going Powell Rivers' way. As far as Gervais, point, but he loses the zone and he's going to have to be careful here. Crozier now. They'll dump it in. Shoots his own dump in is Crozier. Yeah! Clash of sticks there. And back it goes. Just under 20 seconds now on this power play. Time for one more rush. If they're quick about it, bad giveaway though. Kimball just easily picking the pocket. Gervais is not paying attention there. They're just way too casual on this power play at the end of it. And that will do it. Berman slaps the last few seconds off. And we're back to even strength. Shots 33-20 in the game, favoring the Power River Kings. And they lead 4-3 with just over five and a half minutes to go in the third period. Streaking down the ice here as Thomas loses the puck, keeps the zone. Down low now, Thomas again. Can't find the handle. And Cauley will whip it out to center. Bit of a turnover there, and now trying to get past, looks like two different Clippers there. With Szymanski. Nothing doing. Clippers will whip that around, tipped in, no icing. Dominic plays it off the glass. Helped along, but not out. By Volpe. And now in the center, high by Lynn. Bean tries to keep it in, can't. He'll take over now. Lynn now. It's the zone. Looks for help. This will McBean waltzing right in is the defender, right up the middle. Allowed to get time and space, but just couldn't pull the handle. And then cleared out. It did hit the glass though, not directly cleared out of play by the Kings. What a job of Miller Agnew though. He opened up a ton of ice for McBean and McBean probably had more time than he did. That's just a great drop pass by Miller Agnew. Probably had McBean yelling at him. And walks in, a little too much time though and they don't even get a shot on that opportunity. Four and a half to go. Rippers off the draw, backhander, blocked. Crozier goes cross ice to Marinelli. He'll flip it in, just past Adonic. Bourne chases after it. Van Boys goes to the corner. Comes away with it. Loses his footing though. Delisle can't get it back from Buono. That will be ice in here on the Kings as they whip it down the ice. Happy to keep this pace nice and slow if you're the Kings. Don't allow any momentum to build up and hopefully nurse this 4-3 road lead all the way to two big, big points in the Island Division. Well, you want to probably take a page out of the curling book. You want to <laughs> chip the puck off the glass and have it not quite get to the red line so there's no icings. Because if you continually ice the puck, you may get in trouble with four minutes left. So far, they've had decent success in the face-off circle. Running to kill off precious seconds. Looking for an equalizer from in close! Very nearly! Trying to sneak it in near side. Was Gervais, and then the scramble that followed cleared from the front of the net by Upsuth. And now this is a foot race. Winning that is Evans. But unfortunately, two Clippers follow him up. He loses possession. Gervais now just leaves it, shoveling it into the opposition zone. Brodziak can't get there. Centered. 
Back to the point. Tipped, bouncing puck. Adamic does manage to reach out and grab it. A couple of deflections there. Adamic follows the bouncing puck and gets the whistle. This is, I think, where you're gonna you're gonna see the Nanaimo. Nanaimo push because they have three minutes left, they're down by one. Here's this opportunity right in the slot. Damick makes a big save, big rebound, comes across, makes that one. Chase well. gets the good shot off, but the problem is he had nobody in position to get that rebound. Backs turned, nobody quite at covering the angles. Right idea, just lacked the support to really make that a credible chance. And now the Kings will just clear the zone. Malaragni looks for his man, finds him. A nice little shovel pass for Colley tries to catch Adamic out low. Nothing doing. Pushed to one side. That's a loose. High slot there, and it will be Colley. Back to the point. One timer is fanned on by McBean. Colley retreats. Gets it to center ice. Clippers break in. All alone, can't put it back over Adamic. What a rush by Mello Ragni coming up from the back. Managed to get Adamic to go to ground, go to the ice rather. We just couldn't flip it over. And after that, there will be a whistle. Well, I haven't had a chance to see David Miller Agni play since the new coaching staff came in, but he, here's a chance by Cauley. Another chance. Nice and, and low there, hard shot. Here's Miller Agni's rush, ending in this. Manages to beat two defenders. Just can't get enough on that. Not far off though, he had Adamic down and he had a sliver of life there. A well, sliver of space as a timeout is called. Well, as I was saying, Miller Agni, I, I saw him a lot when, when the Mike Vandekamp coaching staff was in Nanaimo. And it seems like this new coaching staff has sort of taken away the reins. They're letting him be a lot more creative. He's been a lot more engaged in the offense in this game. Great opportunity on that rush. And, you know, Adamic, he's going to take the bottom of the net away. you got to get it get it into the upper part of the net. But it's been very hard for Nanaimo to get any real clean looks, especially here in the third period. 2-12 left in the third period. Powell River 4, Nanaimo 3. However, wins the faceoff. Buono calling for it there, but he said they dumped it in. Buono will get it now. Tries to put it on net, misses, and it'll go all the way around and out. And on the rush now is Brodziak. Loses the puck. Follows it up. Thinking shot. Tries to go through the crowd, looking for a deflection, doesn't find it. And Findlater will go out for the Kings. Your eyes on Berman, if the Clippers can keep some sustained possession. Watch and I'm gonna pull the goalie for that extra attacker. And that would require them to get some sustained pressure. He's thinking about it. Now Berman goes, empty net here for Nanaimo. Extra attacker comes on, it's Bourne. And just like that, they lose possession, but recover. Empty net, 70 seconds to go here. Offside warning. Clippers tag up. Shot at the empty net, nothing doing, and Crozier will take over. Maxwell Crozier right up the center. One on five. No help. Bourne gives it back. Crozier again. His brother. Maxwell and Tristan trying to hook up here. High shot over the net. 45 seconds to go. Cauley tries, can't, kept in. Good work on the point there by Marinelli. Crozier. Tristan specifically. Marinelli keeps it in. Great work by Marinelli at the blue line, keeping this play alive. But now this should be it. Kings are free, they clear the zone, but great job by Crozier to get a body in front of it. Empty net, diving block, not enough. And Turnbull will ice the game with the 5-3 goal, sliding across to try and get the block was Trist er, Tristan Crozier. Managed to get some stick on it, you could hear it, just not enough.
And it was just simply Nanaimo not being able to get possession of the puck. When you get Carter Turnbull, 18 goal scorer in this league this year, with a chance like that with no goalie, you get a piece, but you're not going to stop him very often when he's got a yawning cage staring him in the face. Good effort by Crozier. Unfortunately, it will not be enough in Powell River in a very tight Island Division. Margins are so thin, Kyle. They've just picked up two massive points on the road. Gerard, we're able to stop that. And that's the game. Powell River Kings five, the Nanaimo Clippers three. Turnbull with the icing on the cake, the empty netter. After Szymanski got the power play goal, which would end up being the winner. 5-11 mark of the third period during a double minor for Spearing. With that, Powell River closes in on the Victoria Grizzlies for top spot in the Island Division. And, our, and if you want a good idea of how valuable these road points are, Kyle, what a homestand in February is coming up for Powell River. Getting these points on the road is massive. Well, Powell River has a seven game homestand in February, and they have Alberni Valley, I think, three times in that stretch. They have Merritt in that stretch. So they have some difficult opposition. They also have teams at the bottom of the standings. They have a seven-game homestand in February, and that could tip the scales in their favor for finishing first in this division. Here's this oopsie by Adamic that Crozier takes advantage of first period, one nothing. This is the first Good. goal of the game as we look at all the goals scored in this 5-3 win. That was the one nothing goal, but to respond, Evans from also from Turnbull, 1-1. One, one. All alone. Can't leave Evans that alone for starters. But number two, Williams makes it 2-1. Less than a minute to go in the first period. Nothing much Berman could do about that. But then at the start of the second, again, 26 seconds in, Babich on the power play, stuffing in that shot from Marinelli. Tie game. Opsuth had other ideas. Bats in his own rebound. 3-2 Powell River, not four minutes into the second. Once again, Gervais a little bit guilty of puck watching there. Then this lovely fast break here by the Clippers. The decoy there is Crozier, and instead it's Babich to Cauley for the 3-3 goal. But then on the power play, it's Szymanski and Turnbull into the empty net. That's how we got to 5-3. Let's go down to the ice to Chad. Very much, Kyle and Rituro. A great call upstairs from the booth from you guys. What an amazing game. It's lived up to its billing, absolutely. Both teams with a power play goal, and of course, that winning goal coming from uh, Neil Szymanski, uh, and of course, the empty netter a little bit later. Final shots on goal uh, Nanaimo 24, Powell River had 35. Both teams with a power play goal, one for three for Nanaimo, and one for six for Powell River. Uh, next broadcast, uh, you want to come and, and, and join us in. February as uh, it's February the 24th as the Powell River Kings are going to visit the Port Alberni Valley Bulldogs live at 7 o'clock from Weyhauser Arena. Want to say thank you to our special guests and our interviews during the intermission Alex Ronsley and uh, Bob Falliano and uh, on behalf of myself for Rotero, Kyle Christensen and all the crew we'd like to thank you very much for watching, watching Beach CHL Hockey live here on Shaw TV. Final score, 5-3, Powell River Kings over the Nanaimo Clippers. Thank you for your support of the BCHL. Thank you and good night from Frank, Frank Crane Arena.